Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. What a pleasure and what a distinct joy it is of mine to be with you this Monday, January the 29th, uh, sharing this evening's show with Marcia. She'll be along with us in just a little while. Uh, but until then, I get to kind of hold the hold the steering and, and take things through. And, of course, I'm praying that uh, my good friend General Caswell joins me uh, before not too long, as well as uh, several other guests, I believe, that will be coming on tonight. But what a particular joy and pleasure it is for me to have you with us tonight and to welcome all of you of the loyal opposition and I'm so happy to have every single one of you as I look on the screen and I'm looking at all of the names, uh, uh, Heath and and uh, Gilbez and Michelle Grant and, oh my goodness, so many of you that are here faithfully every time that Marcia airs this show. And I want to say, you know, uh, thank you for the support you give to her. Uh, when, and it's not really just to her, to us, you know, to all of us, um, really, as the loyal opposition. So it's a pleasure for me to be with you this evening. I, I missed a couple of evenings. I've been dealing with some urgent family matters, and it's a pleasure to be back with you, Gilbez and Marlene Seeley. Good evening. God bless you, each one of you as well. I'm just running through the listing, Tracy Barrow. Of course, don't forget that if you are joining us and you're joining us from a country other than Barbados, it would be so, we'd be so happy uh, to know what country you're joining us from. We've had people from Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, of course, the faithful Sir Albert Alfred Benjamin, good night. Good night, Sir Alfred from Sir Alfred. <laughs> From Brooklyn, New York City. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us again tonight. Uh, yes, Carrie Fit Wilkinson. God bless you. Thank you for joining. And remember to share, share, share. And I think there's something about the thumbs up that helps us to get a better position on YouTube. I'm still learning a lot of this technology. I don't know it all. And I'm learning from the young people. And I've always said that there's only one place I'm aware of where you don't learn on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't know what is the name of it in your country if you're joining us from a country other than Barbados. But in Barbados, it's called Coral Ridge. And that's a cemetery. And that's the only place I think, well, actually, you know, they might be learning some things, but a little too late. Uh, me being a revenue, I guess you would expect me to, to, to point to that at some point in time. But, um, you know, we are all learning and I'm learning from the young people. And it's such a joy and a pleasure to be able to sit at their feet. You know, I've enjoyed so much, so very, very much sharing this platform with a, a very, very uh, exciting, informative, educated, insightful a uh, young man by the name of Kimar. And I tell you, what a tremendous young man. And good evening to you too. Good night, Michelle. God bless you. Jefferson Sobers, great to have you on with us tonight. 117 and climbing. Let's share, share, share. I think is how Marcia goes, share, share, share. Well, I, I can't get that done the way she does. You know, it's, she's a unique young lady when it comes to that kind of thing. Mystic Angel, good to see you back with us again, Sugarcane King. I don't know, Sugarcane, you got any of those uh, brown skin girls and frozen joys? You know, we need to we need to have that. We need to have that Sugarcane back again. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I, I remember as a little boy growing up, we used to have some tremendous cane. I, I lived in 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 Sweetvale, St. George. Uh, my dad was working in the sugar industry for many years, and I enjoyed some of the sweet brown skin girls and frozen joys. So for those of you who may not know what they are, they're not people. They're those cane. They were th they were thick. They had long uh, distances between the knots. They were absolutely delicious. They were soft. When you bit into them, the juice went all down your mouth. Oh my goodness, what a time we had as children with those canes. But today, 
my goodness, I don't know what they're 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 preparing now. There's some cane you have out there that when you buy it, you know, it, if if it's as big as my finger, you're lucky, and it's as hard as rock. I tell you, good night, Pauline from Maryland. Oh wow, good to have you in the house with us tonight. God bless you. A really a pleasure to have you on board with us. And like I was saying, Sugar Cane King, I hope you're king in truth, because boy, I tell you. We could do with some of them frozen girls, frozen brown skin girls, and frozen joys. All right. Uh, of course, we are into we're going into our uh, reaping season shortly. I think I don't think it's begun yet. Um, but I remember as a young lad, we used to we used to be producing one hundred and eighty six thousand tons of sugar, and today we can hardly. Uh, manage 7,500 or 8,000, 9,000 or something like that. Um, we used to export, uh, I understand that we did have some preferential treatments and protections. Um, oh, yeah, boy, that brunk it was soft and sweet. Yes, Sir Alfred, you better believe it, my friend. Man, I used to love to sink my teeth. You remember when we used to peel the cane, Sir Alfred, with our teeth? You could afford to do that even if you had false ones. But today, boy, even with the real <laughs> even with your real teeth today, I tell you, try peeling it with your with your teeth. Real ones come. <laughs> real ones are going to be coming out too. I tell you. So, uh, uh, you know, I I used to enjoy it, but getting back to this sugar thing, you know, we used to produce 186 thousand tons of sugar. This was like 1976, 77, 78. Um, you know, and today we can hardly produce anything. You know, we we are struggling. Uh, to to sell anything for as this country in order to raise revenue to pay the enormous debts that we have, and you know I don't know where all the money is going to, and I guess we'll talk a little about it to, about it tonight, and maybe all of you have your own uh, view on it, but we are raising massive met revenues through taxation. <laughs> yes, Gilbez, I remember doing that too. Trust me. Uh, uh, peeling the cane with your teeth. <laughs> I tell you, and you could afford to do it if you had false ones because the sugar cane wasn't that hard, you know. But today, man, don't, don't try don't try that here. Not even with the real ones. But anyhow, getting back to this thing of money, you know, we heard Kimar talking again last night because I, while I wasn't on the show, I do listen uh, to the show because I want to be in touch with what's happening. And uh, he was talking about something like 400 million dollars raised from the gas tax. And then I think he was talking about 80 million. Is it something like 80, 80 million dollars a month? Is it? Am I being, am I being correct? 80 million, 12, yeah, close to a billion dollars a year uh, being collected in terms of the, of the, um, of the sewage tax every month. And you have to ask yourself, where is the money going? I hope I hope and pray that in this upcoming budget that the Prime Minister outlines carefully and in detail what has happened to the money that this country has generated. You know, just this evening, I, I had an opportunity to interact with a young man, came to deliver some things at my home. And he was remarking on the... And, and this is not... Uh, I said to him, you know, um, we, we got into conversation. I said to him, well, I'm going to have to leave you soon because I have to prepare for the Marcy Week show. And he said, really? Uh, so apparently he does watch the Marcy Week show, but he was lamenting the fact that, you know, there is such a level of secrecy when it comes to the finances of this country and the fact that people are being put in strategic positions to represent the country, not the prime minister. Listen, let us understand something clearly. We did not elect people to go into parliament to represent the prime minister. We elected people to represent the people of Barbados. Let me be clear on this matter. The prime minister is beholding to the people of this country for the job she has. And, and by that extension alone, she is accountable and it is our demand. This is not a, a, a suggestion. 
she has to give an account to the people who elected her to office. That is not an option. Where do politicians get off on this idea that they are our masters? I remember distinctly that at the oath, the swearing and the oath of office that politicians take at the president's residence, formerly the governor general's residence, you swore to serve the people. Now, last I checked, a minister, a minister is really a servant. And I know that many of us don't, you know, it's a bad connotation in the taste, in the mouth of many people. But the reality is, is that the members of parliament are our servants. Listen carefully, all 30 of you. You are the servants of the people. Madam Prime Minister, you are our number one servant. You are not the servant of the World Economic Forum. You are not the servant of the World Health Organization. And you definitely ain't the servant of, Mil of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You definitely ain't. You are the servant of the people of Barbados. All right? And, and it is important. And it is probably time you hear it said. And need, maybe you need to have it repeated. And, and listen, I, I, I am... I am in agreement with Marcy. You know, people think that we don't like folk. On, you know, we come on this show. Um, <laughs> we come on this show because, you know, and are the way we are because we don't like people or some foolishness like that. No, that is a childish, stupid, doesn't have a place attitude in 2024 from anybody serving in politics. If that is your attitude serving in politics, get out of it. Get out of it. The reality is that you are here to serve the people. The people elected you to represent them. And I'm finding that there are things going on in Parliament that the people do not know anything about. How many times have you heard a politician, a member of Parliament, uh, return, return to... Um, thank you. Uh, return to... to the constituents to tell them this is what the government is proposing. As a matter of fact, you know, I, goodness gracious me, I had it, I had it here, and I, I must have put it away. I have a couple of manifestos, and according to the manifestos, when you run for office, you put out a manifesto, and you're supposed to do what is in that manifesto. That is what the people elected you to office to do. And I'm calling on Barbadians of all walks of life. Supporters of the Democratic Labour Party, supporters of the Barbados Labour Party, supporters of the APP, supporters of any of the other parties, the Solutions Barbados or any of the other parties, anybody that put out a manifesto, to look at it, read it, and see if the government is keeping its promises. All right? This is the responsibility of the citizens of a country. And that young man I was I was commenting about a few moments ago, um, you know, we were talking and he talked about, you know, what we need are honest politicians. And I said to him, um, no, not really. I said, what we need are honest citizens that will hold politicians' feet to the fire. We are too hell-bent on political uh, on, on, on party politics and party support to the to the detriment of Barbados and to the detriment of the future. Now, I am going to play a clip for you. It's only a few minutes long, okay? And it's by one of my favorite speakers we've we've shared in conferences together. I've, I've sat in conferences and 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 heard some tremendous stuff from him. But I want to share. Uh, for a few minutes before the others begin to come on, I want to share a four-minute clip, if I can, with you. Because one of the things that I understand about this platform is that this platform is a platform where people have indicated they are being educated. They're being educated. And, and I'm so thankful that there is a place where you can come to be informed. And we want to encourage you. Listen, I'm just going to take a, a, a break for a minute to encourage you to share, 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 and give the thumbs up. Look, I only got six. What is that there? I got two loves 
and and four likes. We need 253 likes, up to 800 likes. So if you're on, just hit the like button for me, and uh, so that we can get all all of those all of those likes. Okay. Now, um, yes. Thank you so much. So continue to smash that like button, please, 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 please. Mr. Maximus, good to have you. MZX, great to have you. Tony Paris, good night. I'm looking for one familiar individual to come on. I haven't seen him on yet, but I know he will be here. Um, I hope not premier vibes, I premium vibes. I hope that the money is not being used to pay BLP yard fouls that have been employed in the public sector. And based on what I heard uh, Castle talking about last night, we have people working for us in government that we don't know what their salary, we don't know what they're getting, we don't know what their payment is, nothing. And, 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 and from what I understand, from listening to Caswell last night, that is supposed to be a matter of public information. Why? Because you work for us. We decide what you get paid as, as, as the citizens of the country. So you can't go and, and hire people willy-nilly and give them jobs and send them off on some stupid, um, crazy, crazy uh, representation uh, where climate change is concerned and, and, and all of that. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the climate change debate, but I find it very interesting that a lot of the people who are talking about climate change buying houses on the beach. Anyhow, I, I can just leave that there, and I'm not going, because I am going to be doing my research on climate change, because I don't believe nothing nobody says. I believe they have more conspiracies, conspiracy theories coming from governments and coming from politicians than from any place else. That is the honest to God truth. Look at what happened in the last pandemic. And you talk about conspiracy. We were saying ever since that the information being shared was incorrect, but we were being branded as conspiracists. The reality is that the governments were conspiracists and the experts were conspiracists and some of the FDA and the CDC and the leaders and so on. They are the true conspiracists working together with the mainstream media in order to send out a false narrative. They were actually the people doing that. All right. And and you, you the reality is that time has begun to tell. Whistleblowers are coming out. People are testifying before the European Union committees. People are testifying before Congress and Senate. And the truth is coming out. We are seeing story after story of that uh, uh, application that we were supposed to be involved with during the past three years being so detrimental that people are dropping dead. And folk are, are and even here in Barbados, we recently saw um, a, a tribunal. Let me see. I have it here. Forced, uh, forced test. I guess this must be a common entrance exam test. Anyhow, you, you all know why I would say that. Uh, forced test unlawful. Forced test. Let me see if I can just get the whole thing on my, on my screen. Forced test unlawful. Now, it leads me to wonder how many other things were unlawful. And I'm sure Caswell and us will get into this discussion. Was the was the um, was the uh, this this thing what you call it again? Somebody out there help me. Emerge state of emergency was that really lawful? You know we are now seeing the court in Canada has just indicated that the government and the Prime Minister of Canada unlawfully implemented a national uh, a national state of emergency uh, as a result of the situation that occurred in Canada. They've just done that. And that leads me to wonder, was the state of emergency in Barbados legal? And I, I am waiting for somebody to challenge it in the court of law. Was it legal? Was the placing of absolute power in the hands of a single individual was it lawful okay and and i'm not i'm not joking about this you know and i'll tell you why i'm not joking about it you know i have children and i didn't know that what they said to me as a father was going to become a reality until i had grandchildren but they told me you know having children is one thing but when you have grandchildren, it's a totally different ball game. Your whole outlook on life changes. And to be honest with you, that has happened. 
my entire outlook on life has changed. I am now interested in what is going to be the condition of Barbados for my grandchildren and for my great-grandchildren. And you know what? Miles Monroe says it so well. And I want to leave him to, to tell you. And you will, you will understand. <coughs> you will understand. Let me see if I can get this thing done. I don't know if I can get this thing done because, you know, some of us, some of us, um, I don't know how to do this, you know. I, I, I believe, I believe, don't, don't do anything, don't do anything. Let me see if I can, uh, is it a video file that, I'm, that I want to share? Um, no, that ain't it at all. Uh, so, so let me see. Oh, I think I know how to do it, right. I think I know how to do it. I think I remember how to do it, you know. Um, let me see if I can find this thing. I, I just heard something on my headphones go boop. And when that happens, it means somebody is joining with me. And I hope it's my general. But let me see if I can put up this uh, clip for you to watch. And if it's coming through, okay, just indicate for me, please, so that I can know for a fact that it's coming through all right okay so just do that just do that for me so that i can i can know it's coming through Let don't ever believe that a politician is a leader don't ever believe that because the system that we have produces politicians it doesn't produce leaders and so you can have a politician who knows nothing about leadership and he's leading you politicians are concerned about the next election that's all they're interested in that's why they cannot be leaders but leaders are different leaders are concerned about the next generation i want you to compare those two thoughts the next time you have a politician come to your house wanting to vie for your vote just ask him uh, what is your vision for my children I will sit and listen for 20 minutes for you to tell me what it is he will leave your house <laughs> because he has no interest in your children's children his concern is to stay in power to keep the position to win the next election this is why they cannot lead when you are going to have a conversation with a politician you should actually try this as a test you by the way as a citizen of a community you have a right to be seen by the mayor hope you know that if you voted for a mayor the mayor works for you therefore you have a right to see him you can make an appointment to see any public officer you voted for. Did you know that? That's your legal right. If he don't want to see you, you can take him to court. That's democracy. So I want you to make an appointment to go and see your mayor or go and see your governor and just sit and say, I want 30 minutes with you, sir. And ask him about that list right there. I said, sir, what is your purpose for being in leadership in this city? What is your purpose? The first question will make him very nervous. Second question, what is, your, what is your passion for our community? He'll be wondering what you're talking about. What are you talking about? I just want to build roads and bridges and, and provide jobs. No, 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 no. What is your passion? And this is why we need to question the leaders we have. And so I have a little thought here. I call it politics versus leadership. Let's talk about it for a second. Number one, politicians focus on programs, not vision. Number two, politicians' priority is securing the next election, not securing the next generation. Their focus is different. Number three, Politicians are preoccupied with promises, not purpose. What we need is statesmen, 
stateswomen. We don't need more politicians. A statesman is an interesting human. A statesman, think of the next generation. Well, 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 well. Tell me, what do you think of that? What did you think of that little clip by Mr. Miles Monroe? Hmm? What did you think of that? Politicians are not leaders. Politicians are interested in programs, not vision. They're interested in promises, not purpose. You know, I, yeah, I agree with you, Gilbez. That was on point. You see, we come to the conclusion that because somebody enters politics and wins an election, that they're a leader. They're not. They're actually looking for a job. You know, and when I ran, when I ran in 2022, I will, I will, I will tell you this. Look, let me say this. Anytime a politician comes around to you and tells you, starts to talk to you about what they have done, just tell them that's what you're supposed to have done. That's your job. Don't talk to me about the roads that you have constructed and the schools that you have built and the and the hospitals that you have done and and the and the different aspects of that's your job. You are supposed to have done that. That is nothing special or that is nothing unique or anything that should cause me to want to re-elect you. That is what you were elected to do in the first place. You were given the job. And you get politicians coming around telling you what they have done and what they have done and what they've done. I don't want to hear what you've done because that was your job. When you get hired by somebody, you think the, the, the CEO has come around and asks you about your job? The CEO comes, CEO comes around to see if you have completed your job and you get paid to complete your job. And if you don't complete your job, you get fired or you get warned or something of that nature. Now, Mr. My, Mr. Monroe says something just now. That that I I will I will I will I don't know. I would have to take off my hat if I was to see it happen in Barbados, where any citizen can make an appointment to see any member of parliament or any minister to discuss what is going on in this country. And they work for us. No, this is what he said. They work for us. So, and, and, and you know what I found interesting? And I don't know if Caswell can, re can research it and tell us. But he said, if they don't see you, take them to court. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know a lot about, about constitutions in terms of how the Bahamian constitution uh, compares to the Barbados constitution. And I understand Barbados has a constitution. I hear a lot of people saying that we don't have a constitution. But we, but we do have a constitution amended uh, to facilitate one or two little changes. But we are now discussing a, 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 a um, we are now discussing a constitution for the republic. All right. So uh, we we have a constitution in place. But I I like what Mr. Monroe says. Mr. Monroe says. If you make an appointment and they don't see you, take them to court. Now, I, I know I, Caswell is in the back room before I bring him on. Um, I know he's probably listening to us. And Caswell, you are lying down. Um, you're, you're, you're lying down. So I don't know if you can stand up. It would be helpful. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know Natasha. He was a brilliant speaker. Um, he was very inspirational. He was very God inspired and his messages are very relevant. And, and that is one of the things. Thank you, Paul. Yes, Barbados does have um does have a constitution. We provide uh, let me get it, taxes to get things not done. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um I don't know. I don't know, Paul. I don't know. Uh Caswell, 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 let me add you, let me add you here if I can, because I don't like being alone too much. My personality is not the kind of personality that likes being alone a lot. So I can bring you straight in. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good, good evening, evening to you. So good nice. Evening. Yeah, good evening. 
I had some technical issues. I was upside down, was sideways, and all kind of stuff. And yeah, I saw. <laughs> like, this thing was giving all trouble, man, for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I heard the number of times we were trying to get him, but it's good to have you. Let me welcome you to the Marcia Week show this Monday evening, January the 29th. Good evening, sir, and welcome. Good evening, and thank you. You, oh, um, you, ask, I asked Dave to send me the link for um, YouTube so I can share it because people are telling me send the link, send the link. I don't have it. That yeah. is that is for YouTube. For YouTube, yeah. Okay, well, I tell you what, I am going to I am going to send it to you because I have it. So I'll send mm. it send it to you or send it to the group. No, send it to me so that I can I can send share it, it to you. Okay, all righty. So let me send it to you. You should have it on your phone right now. Yes. Just go ahead and share it. Yeah. So uh, we were we were talking about leadership, uh, Caswell, and I was out listening to the show last night in terms of people being employed and salaries being paid, and we don't know what they're getting paid. And and we were chatting about. We started off actually talking about sugar cane. I re I reflect and remember some of those good old days we used to have with the brown skin girls and frozen joys. I'll show you sure you remember those two kin those two kids. <laughs> um you, you know I'm I'm probably before my time. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm younger than you, man. What it is you telling me? Come on, come on, man. Yeah, no, I was a, I'm a country time. boy. I'm a country boy, man. Out of St. George, that was the place yeah. we got the brown skin girls and the frozen joys, man. You know, um, I, I was reflecting today on um, things that have, that we had during the crop. You know, like, remember we used to go and mash the trash? Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I remember we used to go and slide on it like we were skiing. <laughs> Man, I, I tell you, uh, they, they, see, these stories, now since Mark Williams have gone, I think there are not a lot of people that will share them. Because a lot of people are ashamed to see where they came from, you mm -hmm. know? and that is that is unfortunate. That is that is true. We we have become and Barbados is so important and so high and mighty. We don't want to know that we were poor, and a lot of us didn't go to school without shoes. You know, I, I, which I was one of those who went to school without shoes, and I, you know, what I mean, I, I didn't hamper me in any way. I even have a story about a fellow who went to sit the common entrance exam. And um, the common entrance exam was at Combe Bear, you know, and he caught the mother brought him down in the bus. He was from St. George, too. And he went to do the exam, and when he got back in the bus, his mother said, take off them shoes. <laughs> in the bus, you know. You know? She had the, the, oh, my those, goodness. The, they were church shoes. <laughs> Well, Caswell, yeah. I don't know. You know, that's why I appreciate it. Um, you remember the evening Marcia was sharing concerning the Arabara movie. And yes. she went through a, a history of, of what it what it took to make that movie. And I was glad she did because sometimes you need to know what people have gone through. And, you know, we, 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 we take it for granted that uh, when you see persons um, at a particular position in their lives know that they were born that way. But few people realize the struggles many of us had. I remember um, living in Boscobel when my mother was a, a principal of Boscobel Girls School. And before they had a proper bus service there, Caswell, we used to walk um, from, from the school near to Pike Corner in order to catch a bus so we can sit down. Otherwise, we'd have to stand up from Boscobel all the way to Bridgetown. I went to Harrison College, um, fortunately, and not the other place up by the gymnasium, up by the um, up by the stadium, that other institution up there, and the other one out in the country you, you made among the stadium. Um, <laughs> 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 you know, but um, but we, I, I find that you know a lot of people um, don't appreciate their journey, if I could put it that way, you know, and and uh, I think it's John Maxwell that talks about how. Uh, success is a journey and you know this evening a young man came to drop off some material from a hardware store here at my home and he was alone and when he called he told me he was alone and and and, and that there were things that he would be delivering that he would need help with and if i was willing to help him he had waterford university and ours was uh ours was what you call down there again 
<laughs> what do you call them there again? Uh, Crompton uh, Street. Yeah, so Crompton Street University. Crompton Street University. That's where he went. Yeah, but he, um, you know, he called to find out, um, you know, if he could get some help. And I said to him, I said, absolutely. I said, I'm not so proud and so arrogant. I can't help you offload a truck, which we did. You know, so I'm I'm grateful sometimes for the opportunity to share those little nuggets that help people to know that we were not born as they see us. You know, we, we came through, came through the ropes. You, you come through uh, going to school with no shoes. I still remember the days sitting on the back step of my mother's home, eating sardines. You remember when they used to get the biscuits in the, in the, in the aluminum biscuit tins Yes. and they didn't have any covers. You used to go and pull four out square. the biscuits. You mm -hmm. remember those four square biscuits? Mm -hmm. And I remember eating them as sardines with, with lemonade. And and then my dad introduced the first. Um, my dad introduced the first. Uh, what you call these things now? Uh, where you add, where you have the the beer added to the lemonade? What they call it? A cooler? That's what they call it now. A, a, a something? A, a sorrel cooler or a lemonade cooler? So these these, these um, drinks they have. My dad shandy would add or shandy. Like yeah, shandy. My dad would add a, a, a beer to it because when you work hard in the sun, he used to tell us, it, you know, that it takes a little presence of the alcohol to, to, to get back into your system. Otherwise, you be, things begin to happen to you. So he would add a little, not much, he'd add a little Banks beer to the lemonade. And, and uh, I tell you, boy, we used to, we used to put that thing away um, like nobody's business. And then it was the liquor. The liquor and the and the um, from the factory from the factory, yeah. The way the swank, the swank. Mm -hmm. You remember the swank um, mm -hmm. that we used to we used to have too, you know. And and these are all days I remember, and I'm fine. But that's why you know, as well. That is why I'm saying to people today that we are demanding things from our government because politicians are not leaders. A politician, it, um, I don't know if you heard a clip I shared just now with Miles I've, Monroe. I've seen it before. Yeah, and, and he talked about politicians are interested in elections, not in the future of people. The next not election. Not in the next election. All of us the next you election. You know, they're not visionaries. And and somebody had typed up, somebody had messaged here already that they were asking, what is the vision? And and I heard, I heard um, the Prime Minister express something about about her vision, I, I think she says of what her Barbados, and I said, but it's not your Barbados, it is it is our Barbados. That is what she thinks. Uh. You know, it, it's not hers to do with what she likes, and and uh, he was talking about the fact that if you, you your politicians work for us, and that we are we should be able to make an appointment to see any minister, and if they refuse, take them to court. Now. I don't know if we can do that here in Barbados. I, I don't know if there's if there's legislative um, uh, uh, stuff there that if a minister refuses to see me, I can take them to court. It seems though, Caswell, that the moment you threaten somebody with court, that they listen to you. Because we had a press conference, and um, and Kimar. In the conclusion of the press conference, Kimar mentioned something about taking them to court. And I think then you came on and you spoke about some constitutional, um, uh, some constitution. I'd, I'd like you to take a couple of minutes and, and educate us on that constitutional reference you made at the end of that press conference. You, you spoke about, was it a, a constitution? You were not aware that there was any legislation passed that that did away with the old id yes i i um i asked him which thing i i subsequently found it mm -hmm. it is the very same one but it did with it with it with it ever since since 2022 and they had no authority to extend it so the government is acting illegally and each time they extend it they're acting illegally you mean as as it relates to the current move the, the, toward the, the ID card? Yes, yes. No, what, could you what they explain? Didn't, yeah, what they, yeah. Let me pull up the piece of legislation. What they did is to pass this piece of legislation secretly and didn't tell anybody anything, and they passed it in 2021. And it came into force in 2021 as well. But they shelved it. 
until two years later. But according to the law, when they, they tell people about it, the time for those like, um, IDs have already expired. You see, so when they were they were acting the way they're talking about all oh, they extended it, they cannot extend it because it was a an act of parliament. And the only time an anything in an act of parliament can be extended is if there is something in the in the act that says so or by a minister, or you have to go back to parliament and and, and make an amendment. And make an amendment. The, 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 the section 34 of this act says an identification card authorized under section 25 of the representation of the people's act cap 12 meaning chapter 12 or the statistics act cap 192 shall remain valid for a period of 12 months from the date of the commencement of this act this act commenced in, 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 in uh, I can't remember which month now, but 2021. 2021 by 2022, this act should have been going. But they were so devious. They put it in place. They're not telling anybody about it because they took the opportunity when people were not in parliament to sneak the act through before they were ready. Forgetting that they have a provision in here that says that the, these old IDs that we have, you can only use them for a year a, a year after this act comes into force. This act came into force in 2021. So by 2022, if they had done everything that they were supposed to do, according to law, then we would not be having this debate now. But they hit it. And I understand I understand no way they, they have to extend even though they do not do not take the right procedure to extend the correct procedure is to go to parliament and extend it ex by passing a, a, bill, a bill right but you know why they have to extend it sometimes they print four and five cards before they get one come out good the, the, the whole system is a mess. Sometimes the, the, the pictures don't come out good. Sometimes they come out too fairly. Four and five times. And this is information I have from Berlin. They can, they can say I'm telling lies if, that's, if they want to. But that's where they round the cards too. Remember, um, David said Ishmael came to the thing and said they were having technical issues. And then the Prime Minister came and said they don't have any cards. Well, they were both telling the truth. The technical issues that they couldn't get the cards printed. Mm -hmm. That was the technical issue. So, as a result, they had more than enough cards for everybody in Barbados. But because the machine threw up too many cards, they have to they had to go and send back for another set. That has been used um put um put on your parts before you're take off your parts before you're ready. That's the old people talk about, you know, you take off your parts too soon. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the mess that they have made for themselves because they were being devious they wanted to trick the people of this country what they wanted to have this thing in place so by the time uh, we've heard about it it would have been going it did not work out you know because people the but a lot of people will not believe in god right but they call that divine intervention so, sorry to interrupt you cause will you got a little white white something coming over your left shoulder you by your by your microphone you you see anything there oh, oh, oh yes oh is a is a piece uh, that, of paper that was a tissue that was yeah okay you know, no I'm, i was I'm, just I'm, wondering I'm, i was making sure it wasn't anybody um what you call it these people that now come in you know and, and try to infiltrate no. like, i don't put anything past folk you know Caso. i don't that, put that, nothing that, past that, people well that is strategic you know because um in in the event of an emergency sneeze <laughs> <laughs> so I have it there to snatch quickly. <laughs> you will see me. Uh, you will, when you see my camera go out and my volume and my volume go off suddenly like that. Um, <laughs> well, you will know what's happening because I'm still a bit nasal, but I'm getting there. But it's it's good to it's good to have you. Pardon me, the the noise. 
I I picked mm. up my 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 special glass, and I have it in a in a in a saucer, and I forgot to put some mm. tissue paper in the saucer. So you know when you pick up the when you pick mm. up the glass, the saucer comes with it, and it just dropped off. So forgive me for the the, the intrusion of noise. But go ahead. You were making the point in terms of the legislation. So. After they met, they wouldn't tell me anything, they didn't say anything. I went, I went back and they reread the act. Because you know, sometimes you're reading legislation, you don't pick it up all at once. Especially, I was looking for the controversial areas more so than the anything else. Not only to discover this is also a controversial area, area as well, because the government has not gone back to Parliament to fix this. And they can't do it. Like that. So, so wait, 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 wait. Hold on a minute. You're saying that this legislation was passed in 2021, right? 2021. And that it had a validity of a year. No, the, the ID cards. This yeah, legislation yeah. gave the ID cards a validity for one year after for the one, commencement of the act. Right. And the act commenced in 2021. Yes. Which means that in 2022... The government should have should have stated an amendment or introduce a new act or whatever. An, an they amendment have done that to, amendment to extend the ID cards to extend the ID card, and that was not done. It wasn't done. They and, do what they and like, so you know. and so we go from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three, and it was not done. I've been in twenty twenty four now, and we go from twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four, and it still has not been done. So that in truth and in fact, over the last two, three years, uh, their actions have not been supported by law. Uh, would I be correct in that? You are, in, in you are correct. That? You are because, correct. Because I was of the opinion that when something was passed through Parliament and Senate, and of course we know now it has to be proclaimed, da, da, da. okay, fine. But not, uh, but not once, necessarily proclaimed. But, if it is to be proclaimed, you pass it and you say, the act comes into force by proclamation. Okay. Proclamation okay. just means that it will come into a when the government, well, not the government, but the president. The president. Determines that it comes on that particular day. Right. Otherwise, it comes into force immediately unless, so as soon as the government, general, the president signs it, then it becomes the law immediately. But right. if the act states proclamation, then you have to wait for it to um, things like for instance the the constitution that we had that they, they passed in 2021 it came into force on the the 30th of no um november 2021 so it didn't come into force immediately mm -hmm. you see so but I should not be teaching these parliamentarians anything, you know, because no, no, no. But every, yeah, I, I think, <laughs> but, no, but, but, we, but we are, but you are teaching us, and and this no, no, is no. the people who need. No, I uh, that's what I want to say that yeah, I should I shouldn't be teaching us. them, but they can listen to the show and they can learn because yeah. I keep making the point, and I will continue to make the point that Neil Roy is still the deputy speaker of the house because there's no such thing as rescission of the post of deputy, deputy speaker. speaker you can revoke the appointment because if you appoint you can disappoint but there's no such thing as rescission of an appointment a rescission as far as i understand these contracts then you have a contract and there's something wrong with it you can or some parts of it you can rescind certain parts of that contract or the whole contract in which case, then you got the right person the money, or everybody was paid. But I think they were so excited about what they were doing because it was devious, bad, bad behavior. In order to get rid of Neil, in order to rush, and we had two, um, one and a half lawyers, I think, did it, and proposed in second, and they got it wrong. Now, if I were. Neil Rose lawyers, I'd be, I'd be heading to court with them because if you do the wrong thing, it, it cannot come out right. Now that is, that is what is happening in this place. We get carried away because these people 
not, not, I, I may say again, I am not representing Negro. I'm not speaking on his behalf. I am only speaking to the facts of the situation as I see them. And when I said what I, what I said, it is to show that they don't know what they're doing. Not that I'm just trying to get Nero back in. I don't care if he goes in or out. My thing is that you should do it right because they always do the wrong thing. But, you know, that, that's, that's a problem, you know, Caswell. Um, because as I said, I, I, I said a few minutes ago, what Barbados needs are honest citizens. You know, we, we talk about honest politicians, but we need honest citizens that will hold politicians' feet to the fire and not, not just people who are, are politically um, aligned to a party. I said a while ago that our choice is between morals and belief systems and politics. And it would appear to me that um, this administration, let me be specific, this administration is not moving in the realm of legality. And, and, and I'm just wondering, when is somebody going to take them to court? When you, know, when, when you watch what's happening, you watch the lawsuits that are going to come up in Canada. But you saw what just happened in Canada, right? You know, the, 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 I think the Supreme yeah, Court or some the, court the in court Canada. The ruled that Trudeau's um, state, state of, of emergency, emergency was illegal. Was illegal. Was it wasn't justified. Right. And, and, and I wonder, on the basis of the, of the possible similarities of Constitution, because I, I'm, I'm, I don't know all about Constitution, and, and I see Kimar in the background. Uh, he must be he biting at the teeth to get on. Um, and, and I'm going to soon open the gate, let him, let him come in. But, um, you know, we, we, when one looks at Constitutions, because we, we were all on the similar rulerships you know, over the years and so forth, when one looks at Constitutions... Um, I am beginning to wonder when is somebody in Barbados going to take the government to court for a state of emergency? When is because uh, you just saw, um, you just saw the let me let me see if I could pull it up here. You just saw the Employment Rights Tribunal on Thursday found that a particular company in dealing with a matter during the the period of pandemic uh, that their decision was. Uh, onerous and unreasonable. Now, when one considers what was recently announced to Caswell by the chief medical officer in dealing with um, something that's new coming out or arrived at the airport, I don't know if it might come in the airport or seaport, must be flying or one of the mosquitoes or something like that. I don't know. But um, he gets back to talk in this foolishness about certain precautions and the type of precautions when we have proven p -R <coughs> excuse me p r o v e n proven globally by experts that they don't work and yet we're going to come to sell the people of barbados this rubbish again and you know i am i am reading i'm reading some situations around the world where people are beginning to take administrations to court and they're not joking about it. And I'm just wondering when will Barbadians get up off their laurels and take the government to court for the state of emergency, for the unlawful lockdowns, for the attempt to, 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 um, to, to, mandate, to make mandatory certain, uh, all of this. I am just wondering when is somebody going to take the government to court? I mean, I can take them to court, but I don't exactly have the funding available to me at the moment to pay a lawyer. I might have to call in one of those organizations from the United States that help to fund, um, you know, these lawsuits. Because I think there was some fellow um, commissioning, commissioning or whatever, some guy talking about how we were being funded by some right-wing organization overseas, some foolishness or the other. You're mute. You're muted on mute. Yeah, he was being funded by the Barbados Labour Party when he was out there. And even if he wasn't funded, he was working for them because he told me that much. When he said he tried all he he, he tried to stop the the other uh, the administration from getting any investment to build the Hyatt, 
Yeah. That say he, he he said he wasn't really opposed to it. He told me that. I challenged him well, to deny it. Well, this so, gentleman here, or Lady V. Hoy, just want them to know, I asked about this matter of a class action lawsuit, and I was told that the provisions in our legal system in Barbados do not make provision for class action lawsuits. Um, now, I don't know how deadly accurate that is. I was told that by a legal mind. Um, you, would you be able to shed any light on that? Well, I, I am not a legal mind myself, but I'm aware that we don't have any such thing here. What you can do, though, you can get a whole set of plaintiffs or applicants to file a case in court. So even though it, it, it would not be um, a class action, you got so many people, it would look like a class action. So you can get enough people to file. And, and if you get, what the courts will then do is to consolidate them. Because if you remember, three of us filed cases against these COVID directives. And the judge deemed that they were all they were so similar that she would hear them all together in one case rather than hear mine and then hear um, the other two. They just heard one case, but there were three of us who actually applied. So don't worry about class action. Don't see people keep worrying about titles and names and things that they hear. Uh, we can do what we want to do within our own system. Mm -hmm. Whether you call it class action or not, you will still get the same result. So get people if they want people to come forward people will come forward you know but we but, need to we need to have people come forward especially those who have not been able to get the autopsies on their relatives and family that have passed away and they don't know why and they're being told it was because of x when in truth and in fact we're now discovering that y is a possibility and more likely so than x but that is that is another subject for another time. If Pass you well, had co if you had COVID in Barbados around that time, remember watch and, it, and watch your person, language, all right? Just watch yeah, your and language. The person you be died careful. in childbirth. <clears throat> they will say COVID. If you were shot, like what happened in uh, um, Australia, it was on New Zealand, which I can't remember what it was. Fellow was shot, and the people said the birth the death certificate said COVID. Because he had COVID. And the, 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 the culprit, they who shot him, went to court and said, I, I, it can't be murder because they say he died from COVID, not me, my, my shot and kill him. You see, so you got to be careful what you're doing. But you, yes. you were saying we want honest citizens. The problem here is that we don't have the example. So people do the right thing. Let me show you something. When the past amendments to the Emergency Management Act to facilitate the state of emergency. The Attorney General stood up on the floor of the House and said that there is nothing in the law that provides for a state of emer um, a medical emergency. So they had to amend this act. That was a lie. It was an absolute lie. I can tell you that because Section 25 of the Constitution of Barbados provided for I can, I can just read the, the, the actual thing that says I give the details how you can do this state of emergency. It says that the, the, the Governor General can publish a proclamation to the effect and say that it public emergency has arisen as a result of the imminence of a state of war between Barbados and another state, that's one, or mm -hmm. as the result of the occurrence of any earthquake, hurricane, flood, fire, outbreak of pestilence, outbreak of infectious disease, or other calamity, whether similar to the foregoing or not. So you didn't have to go to Parliament to pass any legislation to provide for a, a state of medical emergency or whatever else because the Constitution said um, outbreak of infectious disease or other calamity, or whether similar to the foregoing or not. So, but you know why they did that? The state of emergency in Barbados have certain rules 
that you had to go back to Parliament. I, after you did what you had to do, you had seven days to get back to Parliament and all that kind of thing. Up to now, any orders that you made, you had seven days to get into Parliament. Because the minister can make directives, the only prime minister made all these directives. Yes, but under the law, as it stood then, you had seven days to lay it in Parliament. Today, to this very day, the regulations made and the directives made during COVID have not been laid in the house. Three years later, and that is one of the contentions that we had in our case that you can only have a law if it passes through Parliament because Parliament is supposed to make laws for the peace, order, and good government of this country. That's what the Constitution says. I'm not looking at it, but I can remember that very well. And in order, even if the, part, if the uh, piece of legislation gave you the right, gave a minister the right to make subsidiary legislation, he had to lay it before Parliament. And then Parliament would approve it in either two ways. One, by affirmative resolution or by negative resolution. Affirmative resolution means that when he laid in Parliament, it has, it has to be debated and passed. The negative resolution means you lay it in Parliament and it, still, and it, it becomes law immediately, but then within a 40 day period. If you do not, if, if a, a member of either the House or the Senate introduces a resolution to nullify that and it is nullified, then it ceases being effective. So, and there are only two ways that you can get it through, through Parliament either by affirmative resolution or negative resolution. Those, they took out, they, they took them out of the law. And that law existed since 1611. You got to go to Parliament. You got to pass through Parliament. You remember Gatherer? The church made rules. And those rules were not published in the official gazette. Because they were given the right to make rules. And because they weren't, they weren't published. They weren't, they weren't done in the correct way. Gather around the case. You, you see, and we had an attorney general who um, stood up and made this pronouncement. I had to ask a friend of mine who, who was a lawyer, and, 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 uh, who was a lawyer, I asked him, if the attorney general went to law school, he told me yes. I said, you saw him there? Because I had my doubts. And because of the, the kind of things that he's been saying and doing, I had some doubts. But he told me yes. He, um, he didn't see him there, but someone who uh, he trusted that like he was there with them. So that's why I believe that he went to law school. That's the only reason I believe he went to law school, you know, because somebody trusted, said they saw him there. Yes, so I'm there. Let so me I'm let there. me just let me just interject quick here, and, and you can come back, guys. Well, but let me uh, bring on Kimar. Uh, he's been there for a little while. I've just been looking for an opportunity to jump him in. Good evening, Kimar. Such a joy to have you joining us, sir. A pleasure to have you on the platform again tonight. Uh, you have been in demand, as I'm sure you're seeing there. I am getting the pressure. To get you on the screen, so you're on, sir. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening to you, uh, Pastor Ferdinand. Good evening to Caswell. Um, good evening to the lawyer of position. Good evening to Marcia, Dave, Lumumba, Bongolites, Rose, the whole crew, you know. Um, yes, yes, yes. Happy to be here yet again. Uh, it was, you know, sitting learning a lot from Caswell just now. Elementary procedure. Um, I think that is essential for us to learn how Alma works. Um, we, ha we had so uh, examples of blunders, blunders after blunder after blunder. It's to the administration of the law 
in Barbados. But I raised on the show previously that the Emergency Management Act, that cabinet, those members of parliament who sat in cabinet, so look this country to the Prime Minister. And cabinet, in that same piece of legislation, voted the best. But first, the legislation said that all power whatsoever is vested in the office of cabinet to make the decisions whatsoever needed to run the country. Then it said on the next line, and it's just me paraphrasing, not quoting, it said on the next line that cabinet now vests all that authority and power in the office of prime minister. Right? And then the prime minister was the one giving verbal directives as opposed to how the country was functioning. Right? So that is why and how laws were being passed during COVID and they didn't have to go to parliament. Right? So the cabinet, the ministers, who those were ministers sold out um, the country and handed it over to the prime minister. I, I rendered the parliament null and void. I, I raised on the show before that all of the money that was spent during COVID, during that state of emergency, was supposed to be accounted for at Kaipo. So all contracts over a million dollars in value were supposed to be public information and stored at Kaipo. However, when I went down to Kaipo myself and I asked about the public contracts, the people in Kaipo didn't even know what I was talking about. Right? So you cannot account any of the monies that was spent, not by the parliament, not by cabinet, but the office of prime minister because all authority was vested in her office for that for that state of emergency period. Right? So nobody else had any say. So all of those verbal directives about lockdown and shutdown at this point and this store could open and that store could open and the covid unit was what they call a terrorist unit because it was illegal right the covid unit was an illegally appointed unit and they had no right to be bringing any charges against anybody in barbados during that state of emergency period right? but, but but they did it was an illegal operation right and the Prime Minister, much to Justin Trudeau, should be brought to justice for putting this state of emergency on us. And they extended it for much longer than was needed, you know. But we weren't supposed to be on there for two years. They kept prolonging it and prolonging it and extending it and extending it. And for no good reason, right? So even in the midst of a health crisis, you still had politicians seeking to be corrupt. Right. Look at the A and E. They they claim they rebuilt the A and E. Look at the state of the A and E today. They rebuilt the Harrison's Point facility. Sex thing. I have not heard anything about that facility. Right. And they spent money on even the Ash Work program. Right. A lot of the programs that were rolled out during COVID, the money was just spent because the Prime Minister said to spend it. But that is the law that they passed. In that emergency management act so the same way that trudeau was found to be acting unethical in terms of that i believe the same thing could happen here because that clause which says that cabinet vests all authority and power in the office of prime minister that's what we call dictatorship that's what we call a political system without a check or balance because if you remove the oversight of parliament and then you remove the oversight of cabinet. Cabinet is the head decision making body in the country. If you remove that to say that one person, which is the prime minister, and, and that person's office will now manage the entire prison, that is full blown dictatorship. Right? Um, I wrote an article to the nation, and luckily the nation carried that article. It spoke to the the imbalance of power um, that occurred in Barbados during COVID. And I really believe Pastor Ferdinand that Ryan Strong, who was the man tasked to put this uh, contracts, public contracts registry at Kaipo, that he needs to be 
brought up to answer questions to Barbadians as to why the public contract registry for that emergency period because it, it, it was stored in, the, in it was stored in the public financial management act it is law that those contracts were supposed to be there but today none of those contracts that were issued by the prime minister i say in the problem again the contracts that were issued by the prime minister during covid none of them could be accounted for at this day and i could bet you pastor Ferdinand, that if we had to run a forensic audit the office of prime minister for those two years that barbados was under a state of emergency i could bet to the prime minister would have to resign uh, from her office well that that's that's some that's some pretty that's some pretty tough stuff i mean it, it's it's uh it, it's amazing what we see happening in other countries why why can't we get something happening here we can get something happening here now because somebody sent me a, a whatsapp message i know me i have to check for myself so i actually checked it out it said that um a tribunal in australia employment tribunal ruled that a person who got injured as from the vaccine having you remember um, what your words yeah, what your I, I, words I'm not, I'm not doing it. having um <coughs> been required to get it by the employer now the employer it is it is no um a work related injury and the employer got compensated him it is it was a, a youth worker who developed pericarditis after his third covid 19 vaccination will receive weekly compensation and medical expenses having convinced the South Australian Employment Tribunal that his work injury his injury was work related. The youth worker, Mr. Shepherd, worked in a residential care setting for the Department of for Child Protection. And it goes on, but basically that is what it is. So um we have a lot of people like that in Barbados who got injured. I have actually met some I have actually interviewed one and I actually when I and she needed to get tests. And I was at a meeting with the Attorney General and I said, Well look, this young lady has spent all her money trying to to um get over this injury that she got as a result of taking you know what. And she didn't have any money left now. She sp she spent thousands upon thousands of dollars in medical expenses. And then the doctors here needed a particular blood test that was not available in Barbados and they wanted to send her blood overseas, but it would cost $1,600. And the Attorney General looked me in the face and told me in the presence of several people, because I was a meeting with nurses, oh, the government doesn't have any liability. And I, 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 I got angry. I said, but I ain't talking about liability. I talking about morality and decency i start doing all kinds of things i said no you you you, you, you ain't got a heart you, you're going to tell me that this young lady who's never been ill before in her life and all of a sudden she get this and the doctor said attributed it to that um and and then they're gonna say oh they don't have any liability that man was that man if he has a heart ever gonna find it somebody will kind of open and let me see it because i don't believe that he has a heart you know and all she did was $1,600. After I started getting on so bad, the chief medical officer, Dr. George, said, okay, 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 we can handle it. We'll provide the money. Can we tell you? Attorney General said, no, not a basic girl ain't getting a cent for something that they forced her to do. She don't want to do it, but she wants to keep her job. So now we have a precedent coming from a similar jurisdiction. And... They have ruled it is employment injury. They force you to take these things. Now they're going to suffer the consequences. And I'm encouraging everybody. Now because these things happen, this injury happened more than three months ago. A lot of legislation only allow you to file a case within a three-month period. 
head to court. Head to court and say, well, use this Australian precedent as part of your argument. And we'll see what happens. Because these people, yeah. a lot of people need help, you know. A lot of people have died as a result. I think Their a lot families of families should also have wrongful death suits against this government. I think a lot of people, Caswell and Kimor, fail to see the connection of everything that we're talking about, you know, the digital ID, the whole aspect of injuries, the whole aspect of state of emergencies, etc. But they're all linked together. And um, I don't know what's uh, on your mind, um, Kimar, you know, in terms of what you've been hearing us share, some of the stuff that was shared last night, some of the stuff shared today. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, um, and I see, I see the queen is in the, in the, <laughs> well, years ago, Caswell well, used to say the queen is in her counting house, counting out her money. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know that. She is in her counting house counting out her money. It would be nice if that were possible because then we could just pay for all of the marches and everything and it would be so easy. But we see the queen is is in the house and, and ready. So I'm not going to delay Kimar. Um, I'm not going to delay too much in bringing her on very shortly. I, I got a nod there, so I'm just going to hold for a sec. But Kimar, some thoughts in terms of, we were chatting about some of the legislation and, and things that are happening in Barbados that, that just seem to be bypassing, bypassing the law. And, and yet nothing is happening about it. I mean, I, 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 I listened to what you all were talking about last night um, in terms of salaries that have to be presented and so forth and persons being employed by the government without that being done. Uh, what, what, what's on your mind relative to all of this tonight? Oh, well, we need a new government, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you know, two ways about that. Uh, but <clears throat> we, to, to, before I say that, we should backtrack and remember that the government was voted in 30 love twice. I want, I dare say, under some very questionable circumstances because I still don't believe that they won all those seats. First, not the second time. Right? Um, realistically, they use the same COVID laws again to disadvantage thousands of persons to stop them from voting. They had so many people in quarantine. I said once you had COVID that you couldn't vote. I never knew that a disease could stop somebody from voting. Hey, we had an HIV pandemic. We had the we well, got a cancer pandemic. We had a dengue fever pandemic, and I never stopped any boy from voting. But for some reason, COVID. We had yellow fever, right? Spanish flu, all type of things, and they never stopped any boy from voting, right? But the government again decided. That as long as you got COVID, you can vote. Again, that was against your constitutional right, against universal yes. adult suffrage, to stop yes. anybody from voting, right? But but that is what they did, and that passed for governance in Barbados, right? A police officer, now you all saw the video, say to me directly to my face that you are bringing these people in here to vote for a cal. Six o'clock, it wasn't even gone. And a police officer could tell me that you can't win a seat, but here you're bringing people in here. He still got a job today. Right? So, I don't think there's nothing that could be done. I don't think there's nothing that can be fixed. I don't think that there's no reasonable, reasonable position that we could come to. We need a new government. Right? And we need the same way how the same election observers all over the world observe elections i think we need some international observers here in barbados right because this thing is not going fair and next election i don't think that it will go fair again because with the implementation of this digital id you see that the ebc was the one who had responsibility for the id card right i've never heard of that in my entire life 
about electoral and boundaries. Listen, I'm seeking the manager ID card. I you are saying to people that you can't vote unless you're going to get a unconstitutional and illegal ID. Right? So I, I don't see anything about any fear elections happening in Barbados next time. If I think it's going to be worse uh, than the last two, right? Because there's a lot to lose. And the government knows that it has become so unpopular with the people, right? That the people are already ready to vote them out. But the problem is that the people are not, right now, are not seeing the Democratic Real Party as an alternative or replacement for the government right now. If things were different, right? If things were different and we had a structured alternative in place that the people had confidence in, if that the people, our marches would be bigger. I believe that the opposition will be much larger. And I believe that more the MPs would have already resigned already to the Prime Minister would have said, boy, look, we ain't got no choice. We gotta we gotta go back to the we gotta go, go back to the polls they gotta get a fresh set of candidates. But we had something in Barbados that has developed since the government changed. We had some of the largest paying ministers, we had the largest paid cabinet, we had the largest paid consultants. We had the most yard foes in work ever in the history uh, of Barbados. All types of people who support the Barbados, the party working all over the place, private sector the public. So, lure past the further amount of money. Call it bribery, right? It's causing people, and especially the businesses that get contracts from the government, that the government has their people in place on the board on the board the government has people on the boards of banks on the boards of credit unions because of the insurance they have people everywhere and they strategically use the government resources to send to these institutions to tie the hands of these people because when the government invest you can't come up for the side so look at you right look look at the barbarous economic society Right? The Barbados Economic Society was one of the most vocal organizations on the Barbados economy. Right? But since that, since then, since the government changed, the Barbados the Economic Society has gone right down, they dusted nothing. The unions, they dusted not to be heard of. Right? And the people are looking at the DLP for a voice. If they get to get in that voice, Debatable. Right? People are looking at the Marcia Vick show for voice, and they're getting it. They're receiving it through the Marcia Vick show because we had a press conference. Within two hours, they could be pulling back on their illegal activities. As, as Nerja Newton said here, illegal actions and undemocratic practices because they know you can't tell the citizens of Barbados that they are not a patient. If they don't want to take an ID and the first document you get when you're born is a green card. But still you're telling people you need to be a barbarian. So, Pastor Ferdinand, it is my belief that we need to audit the government for all of the all that they have passed, for all of the financial corruption that they have engaged in. I think a bit you not Nero and the only boy that can be facing the law courts. <laughs> hey, and more, and the entire government, the entire cabinet is going to have to resign after we audit these people. So that that is all I have to say. But who 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 calls the audit? Who um who calls the audit, uh, Kimar? Who would call the audit of the government? You see, the audit for the government is the public accounts committee. They ain't got none. And then, of course, then for the government spending and stuff, is all the Auditor General. But the, the you know his reports are just salacious documents that are filed. Nobody does anything with them because he has identified so much wrongdoing. And I dare him to go and and check 
the what the government, the, the politicians are doing, <coughs> because what the prime minister is doing by hiring all these people can still be considered an election offense because these people get promised jobs if they do vote, so they get a vote and they get jobs. So even if you, if, even if you get the job after elections, it is still an offense. So um, I think you will find that election offenses and controversies are, of course, nobody reads that. So, but the government of Barbados knows that they have control over everything in Barbados. The police, defense force, the civil service. So they know they can do their nonsense and get away with it. Let me let me explain why I say this. Uh, before you before you go into your explanation, Caswell, let us welcome the lady of the show tonight, um, Mrs. Marcia Weeks. It is a joy to have you on, ma'am. As you know, as I am your co-host, and so uh, when you arrive on the bus, um, I am quite prepared to hand over the driving wheel to you and take up the navigator's position. <laughs> so, but I know you will tell me, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Not at all. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I wanna, I've been listening yeah. back I want to hear what Ka Mr. Franklin is saying. The kings are here. So the kings are speaking. So I will, I will wait <laughs> my turn. So... You're doing a great job. Um, Wonderful. Okay, so let Mr. Franklin continue. Wonderful. Well, we welcome we welcome you to the show. I know what I was talking about now, Freddie. Um, I try to remember. I like lost my train of thoughts. I bent into something else. I I, I think um, I think we were we were discussing the 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 matter yes, of yes um, yes I have it. Okay, the go politicians ahead. have corner the market, so to speak, on all the positions in the pub and, 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 and that can do them any harm. The commissioner of police, he was one of those officers who sued the last administration when he did not get promoted. He and the rest of them lost the case in the high court. They appealed. Then the, the Court of Appeal, they lost there too. So they said they're going to go to voice CCJ. And they would have lost there too. But the government said, no, we're settling out of court. You just want the case that you want to settle out of court with my money. That, that is talented about the corruption. You won. And you can, you can say, okay, well, no, nah, we ain't got, we don't mind that we win, we win this case. We, 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 we settle in and pay them thousands of dollars and then promote them. One of them became commissioner. Now you really feel, you know, just look at it from normal eyes. Don't, don't try to be a great analyst. You really feel somebody who just get thousands upon thousands of dollars and a promotion. They can go and lock up the body that. Do it, give him the, the, um, the promotion or, or cause the promotion to come about. But then, under our system, I was talking about it last night, the Prime Minister decides that she will determine who will become a head of department or who will become deputy or permanent secretary or deputy permanent secretary. So these are the people that would, would have to prefer charges against a, a politician. You already feel that, and something a lot of them are acting. And then, if no one is decided, well, you know, a lot of people are acting all the time, you employ them on contract. So they started to employ civil servants on contract, which is dangerous. Because let's say you have a civil servant on contract, and he has to investigate you. Contract coming up for renewal. Don't get renewed. Case dead. Civil servants are not supposed to be on contract, especially at that level. You can get doctors on contract and other things, but no, never the people who make the decisions. Never the people who make, make administrative decisions. Doctors make decisions, but that's life or death. I'm talking about administrative decisions. You know? Then, this government went to parliament 
and amended the Defense Act in order to bring a man, come, um, Commodore um, Sherlin, to bring him from retirement to say that he's no young enough to be Chief of Staff of the Defense. He was not, he was too old to be Chief of Staff. As a matter of fact, he is older than the man he replaced. And the man he replaced retired because you know he he he, he reached retirement age. Then they changed the retirement age for this one. So you so you bought the army, you bought the police. They got the civil servants in your hand, all those people who can make decisions. And then no you you're responsible for appointing judges. Barbados is in a, a dire position. We have a situation where even if there is not, not corruption, there is the likelihood that there will be. There's the, the, the appearance that there will be corruption because the people who got these jobs didn't get them by, the, by, by, their, by their efforts. They got them. We, we, we had a judge person appointed judge in Barbados who went to pull a, gu a gun on the, the husband's mistress. So what happened? But well, he still get a point. All these things happen. And you feel at this place, and so, you, and so you feel if a case goes before that person um, against the government that they won't feel aware We have this this place needs a good spring cleaning. Take you know the Americans call it spring cleaning. Take out everything out the house and clean it down and wash it out and disinfect it. This place wants disinfecting. It is it, it is rotten to the core. And almost every person who you see in office owe their job to somebody else. Not to their own their own um, efforts. So that is, and that is the way they, they, they control you. You, if, even if you get it on your own efforts to put your contract. So you still, you still now have to tow the line. If you don't tow the line, your contract can get renewed. I see people complain about the chief education officer that she's, she's not doing her job properly and all that kind of stuff. Chief education officer is on contract. You have a minister who will get who gives directions to the, the chief. Suppose you tell the chief. Suppose the chief says to the minister, minister, but no, you can't do that. You, you know, you see this contract, yeah? You can do. And she's not, and she's in, but I'm older than she is. We're older. So you might not get the best decisions or or even the best press conferences. When you know that you, they can't fire you for nothing. Because the only body that should be able to dismiss a public officer is the president acting on the advice of the, uh, of a service commission after a hearing. But I'm, I'm, you know how a situation where you can be dismissed because your contract says you could go. The I'm glad and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm glad, Caswell, you, you brought in the matter of the president. Um, you you said that the dismissal on on uh, on the on the uh, confirmation of the president had a recommendation. Um, I'm glad you brought up that idea, uh, Kimar. T tell me tell me something about about what what we're hearing. You know, a lot of people are are asking. You know, how how do you change a government? I mean, when you look at what we have. You know, I've 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 uh, floated the idea of um, because, as you know, you, it, it takes the prime minister to call to call an election. I'm not sure it can be done anywhere any other way on our constitution. I stand to be corrected, but I floated the idea of reaching a certain number of signatures, and once those number of signatures are reached, the 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 um, matter can be taken to the president and the president on the advice of the people of Barbados. Can can force the prime minister's hand to call an election, 
what are your thoughts as it relates to the to the president? I mean, I, you know, in terms of of 2024 Barbados and going forward, because I saw a couple of comments in here. You know, the the, the president is a figurehead. And he, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, um, I I wanted to quote from uh, the legislation, but my device died, so I don't have it in my face. Um, but the office of let me let me just let me just say, it Frank, the president ain't gonna do nothing, 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 nothing to change um, the administration in the day because one, this administration appointed the president. Right. Remember, she was the governor general before, and out of courtesy, they gave her the office of presidency, right? For a, for a constitutional amendment, uh, when they wanted to go to a republic, right? so the office of the governor general became null and void. They did was to shorten the term of a because the first person, the first president of a country usually sit so about 10 years to allow for stability of the system to and allow for a smooth transfer over uh, from the office of general or fully functional office of so they give them usually 10 years what this government did was to lower it now to four years which means that sandra mason's time is going to be up come 2025 right so if you look at it Let's count. We went to Republic in December 2021, so let's count from 2020, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, right? They put in a legislation that at least six months before the president's term is up, that the president has to cons and the prime minister has to consult on if the president will be taking the additional six months to complete the people there is an she will go past the set time in legislation right they also they to strap in the president is to say that only takes one third of the house of representatives to remove a sitting to trigger the process to remove a sitting president so if the president decides to act out or misbehave remember the prime minister controls the parliament and the, the prime minister could Get them to trigger a process to remove the president. So the president has no bite whatsoever. The president is really put in place by the parliament. Because remember, the parliamentary group are the ones who voted the president in, you know. Right? And it only takes one third of those people to trigger that process, and the president could be removed. So the president does not have any independence. The office of president has no independence whatsoever. Right? As Caswell says all the time, you talk about cancel, but everybody really cancel is really the Prime Minister's decision. So what we have to watch for now, because time is coming up very soon. Our F Sandra Mason is going to be allowed to take another term in office which they don't. It's being heavily rumored. Again, rumored, it's being heavily rumored that Sandra Mason is going to be is going to be I don't want to say a kick though, but they're not going to renew her term in, in office because they have their eyes on the former president of the Senate or the, the president of the Senate who has just received a knighthood. Uh, and it's been heavily rumored that President Farley is set to, to take over the presidency of Barbados after Sandra Mason. That is what's being said, right? Everything you could check through that legislation and see that they set up the office of presidency to be under the thumb of the prime minister and the parliamentary group. That if that person does or say anything they don't like, easily the one third of the people trigger a process to remove uh, the president of Barbados. And that, that is not, or it shouldn't be that way. But again, um, we need better leadership in simple terms. No, um People keep saying that the president got the power and all kind of stuff. The, you mean the president refuses to use the power that they have? Because I am going to insist and I will contend that the president has the power to fire the prime minister. 
Any person who appoints can disappoint. The president appointed her. One. But I'm not going to be so simplistic. In Australia, I was a little boy then, 1975, I remember the case. The prime minister was a guy called Goth Whitlam. He had some problems with the, um, in the, in the Senate. And the government was like having some difficulties. And the Prime Minister, the, the, I'm sorry, let me get the Governor General, was Sir John Kerr. He, you know, went and get advice from the Chief Justice and then he don't mention it to the body. And because what can happen what could have happened in those days was that if the pres if the Governor General was was thinking about removing the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister heard, the Prime Minister could call the cat the Buckingham Palace and say, remove this person as the Governor General. And the Queen has no choice but to live the Prime Minister says. So what they did, they kept it a secret. Until such time as they, 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 they got together with the, I think it was the Commissioner of Police, the Chief Justice, and whatever else, and then they fired Gough Whitlam. So, the, and, and that was the power of the Governor General. The President has all the powers of the Governor General. Because we have not used them, or the President Barbara, the Governor General Barbara has never used it, it doesn't mean that the President does not have the power. The President, no, can move because in order to remove the Prime Minister, the, 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 um, the, governor, the president, you have to go to parliament. So the, the president can fire now, or even say, well, I'm calling and telling her, I'm firing you tomorrow, you know. And she can't hold a parliament, but it's a fast to get rid of the president. The president has the power. I contend it would be a bit, It will be, I said, I just said, usually on the advice of, not normally independent power. Yes, but there was no body to give the advice to fire the Prime Minister in Australia in 1975. The yes, 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 I understand that. But like when the Prime Minister, the President, or, or Governor General, is going to dismiss somebody from the public service, you get advice from somebody. If they're doing something, they have to be done by a minister. But they still have residual powers that they can, that they, that they can use. Those powers, I would like to see here debated by the Lords of Barbados because the Queen of England or the King now could fire the, 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 um, the, 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 the cabinet, the Prime Minister in this cabinet. It, no, it isn't usually done because the Queen didn't get involved in politics and they didn't get involved in these things. But when this, the country became ungovernable, the Governor General took steps to bring back order and fire the Prime Minister. Look here, Grenada, Sir Paul Schoon. When they had all the anarchy, the only body they had left, he, there was nobody to give him advice to, to take the action. And Sir Paul Schoon ruled and made reg regulations for Grenada after the, the intervention when they killed Bishop and all kind of stuff. People keep forgetting that these things happen. The president has power. What happens, the president seems not to want to use the powers that they have. You know? I, I, I believe that the president, this president, she was never intended to be president, but it was the people of Barbados who kicked up and mortally backed down because she had people as my fact, it was promised to several people. And when the people of this country kicked up, start making fuss and said, Well, get rid of Sandra Mason, that kind of thing. She said, No, 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 no. I, I even went to consult with her and she said yes that she would accept. You remember? So she was not intended to be president but under mayor. So the fastest time out for her is what they will do. They will take her out. I believe though 
that the office of president as presently constituted is a farce and that we, we need a president who is elected by the people and not elected by parliament. <clears throat> and then the only people that can remove the president, the only body that can remove the president will be the people. We need something like that. We, we, I'm, I'm tired of having this recycle colonial governor generals just be naming president and don't do anything else. Why should parliament elect the president? What wrong with us? We can elect a president too? Well, well Kaz, will you remember that I floated, the, I floated several ideas to move Barbados forward. First of all, because of my, my consistent travels to the Cayman Islands, where there was a strong two-party country, very, very strong. The last election resulted in 13 independent candidates being elected to office out of 19 constituencies. So it is my idea of a view that if we can identify the, the applicable people in Barbados, there's no reason. And don't give me all this talk about people having to walk all over a constituency and, and, and try to, 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 to garnish votes and all of that. We have to understand that the whole aspect of politics has shifted and needs to be shifted so that we can identify honest people of integrity in our communities, in our constituencies that can run independently. That's the first thing I floated. The second thing I floated was that every one of the positions should be voted on by the people. The members of parliament should be voted on. The prime minister should be voted on and the president should be voted on. These were the ideas that I floated on, on, on more than one occasion because it's the, it is now republic. We are, are we a republic in name only or are we a republic? Because the republic is by far with, I'm sorry, by far of. So the people in, in the United States, and I think the United States is probably, for the lack of a better expression, the most successful republic that we have seen so far on, in, in world affairs. I believe so. I don't know of any others, and I stand to be educated by anyone else who is capable of, of doing so. But in the United States, every four years, they elect a Congress. I, I missed out Senate. They elect the Senate, and they elect the President every four years. I think it's actually, I think it's every two I think it's every two for Congress or something like that. I think every yes, two every years. two years every the entire years Congress is elected, is and elected. every and the, and then and, and then the elections, a third of the, the the Senate is elected. So right, so the Senate they, they serve for six years, but only a third goes at each election. Right, and and then the, the other thing I floated for, for four years. The other thing I floated were term limits on how long a person can stay in parliament and in office. And those are the ideas I, I floated. Now, some people would agree, some people would disagree, but they're the ideas I floated. If we are going to change our political system in Barbados, we have to do some radical things. We can't continue to do, as, as one of my bosses used to say, spinning top, spinning mud in, in uh, wheel and mud top all the time. Top and mud. Top and mud. You can't continue doing, that's, that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing, the same, and expect different results. We need a, a what was it, the, the, the Trinidadian, um, uh, Kimar, the Trinidadian um, representative for Tobago? Watson. Was, yeah, was talking about we need a revolution in politics in, in the entire Caribbean, but more specifically because we, li we live here. We need a revolution in politics in Barbados. It has to change. It has to put the people in a position that they have the power to, as you would say, Caswell, to appoint and remove. The people have to have some avenue, whether it is through the president or whatever avenue. The people have to have an avenue. Because right now, the only way an election can be called, and again, I stand to be corrected, is if the prime minister call it. I mean, apart from what you've just shared, um, uh, Caswell, and I would have to research quite a bit of that. But apart from that, as far as I'm aware, I think the prime minister is the only person that can call an election. And I'm sure if I'm wrong, I will be corrected by well, Adrian the, or somebody the, um, else. If the prime minister doesn't call the election and the term run out. The president will call. Yeah, yeah. Well, if the term, but I mean, in our current state, we don't want to wait till the term runs out. Can we wait for the term to run out? 
what do we do? What can we do constitutionally Strike. and legally Strike. in terms of Make the place ungovernable? Strike. Where is it that I saw that recently? Some some um somewhere I saw recently is it Argentina? Is it Argentina? They have some massive strikes. Well, look, we can't get the people to come out for a simple march. And 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 at the end of the day, the young man that spoke with me this evening, I said, it, I looked at him in the face and I said, but it is your responsibility. I said, it is people like you, you millennials and whatnot, need to hit the street. And 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 he just said to me, well, it, you know, a lot of us don't know anything about politics, and a lot of us are really not interested. And that's the problem right there. Yeah, you know why they don't know anything about it? Nobody ever taught them. No. Nobody you taught know, me. So, so, I, I, um, I was just being malicious and I even find out for myself. And that, you know, and that, but, <laughs> but uh, Kimar, you know, it is concerning. Somebody play, uh, uh, placed uh, in the chat a little earlier um, pertaining to the fact that the president, I think it is in the, it is being considered to run for seven years. But the reality is that right now it's four years. There's a reality of it. So by but, what, 2025? It, but it was made that sharp because, you know, they were intent to get rid of her. They, she was never supposed to be there. So that's why it was short. And so they gave her the, the shortest time possible to sit in the chair. Um, and, and the time frame is right before the next general election. So they will have their person in the chair seated before um, the next general election. She'll be out. So I, I don't see a general election in Barbados being held before the president is and, and the next president is elected <clears throat> and unless they see a clear victory uh at the polls that they will go back and then as soon as they go back if that if it's before 2025 um they will just go back and change the road um by that time but like i say it, 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 she's not going to get the whole 2025 in uh in office because that as it says at least six months before uh she has to indicate publicly according to the legislation if if she be going he wrote because they have to give them time to select another person, but no when the, the BLP they already have a person in line and as I said, there's been heavily, heavily rumored. So just rumors that that Reginald Farley um is 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 you know uh tipped to become the next the next president. So for me, uh, if we're gonna continue with the ceremonial presidents, they can at least try to appoint people who have a semblance of independence. Reginald Farley was a, a, a barbarous a party politician. He represented Christ Church East. He was in the Senate. He, we, we know he's he's a barbarous a party man. Right? At least give the office sometimes a respectability because there are people in Barbados who never got into the political fray. And they will make excellent uh well make an excellent president. Right? So I I think we shouldn't go that route in terms of Turning the office of presidency, you know, into a, a political... It's a political thing, no, no. A political reward. No. Uh, keep the office of president much like the, the office of director of public prosecutions or like the uh, auditor general's office. And, and allow the person to operate without fear or favor. I, I, I know I'm not supportive of this idea. Um, yeah, you're not. Over like, to you. Uh, Wow, there's silence. There's silence on the Marcia Week show. That is that no. Is I, I, I I I was waiting for Maxine to start. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. That's unusual. We are a talkative bunch. I, I can't start until I'm invited to do so as well. Uh, 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 well, we 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 want to welcome you, the Maxine. Maxine, forgive me for not uh, welcoming you earlier and interrupting well, the right. conversation, but it was it was so intriguing listening to it. But permit me as the co-host to welcome you to the show tonight. Thank you it very much. It is a pleasure I, I, to I, I have you. I am here. Pleasure. Pleasure listening, to have you with us tonight. Listening intently um, <laughs> and recognizing that Barbadians have identified this show has a place where they can 
hear some serious, uh, incisive analyses of, of issues facing the country. Caswell, just one thing before I, I go back to Marcia. Somebody, I think it was, I'm trying to remember who, the, the person who asked about the relevance of Australia. Um, what I want to say to him that when you're talking about legislation, as members of the Commonwealth, our legislation is often, um, mirror, they mirror each other. Um, I think you were referring to something earlier, a particular um, case of, of an employee being rewarded or whatever the case may be. But if you look at our legislation, it looks very much like that of the UK, Canada, Australia, for example. So um, in similar kind of legal systems and they've drawn on each other. So that's the extent to which it is relevant because when, when courts courts operate on the basis of precedent, Caswell, you're the, the legal mind, even though you obviously you're not a lawyer, but I tell people I know that you have a better legal mind than a lot of lawyers around here. Um, and understanding not only a legal mind, but an un, let me be very specific, understanding of, of law or um, so that is irrelevant. I just wanted to clarify that. I'm trying to remember who it was, but uh, I didn't make a note of the name, but I noted the question. So where's Marcy disappeared? So over to you, Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right here and I'm sitting down just enjoying the show, enjoying and I'm saying, wow, this is what, oh, how it is, you know? Uh, Mr. Franklin, when people are, are at home and they are watching, and this is this is really really great job um, um dr ferdinand great job um and everybody this is, is going really really wonderful as usual i guess <laughs> but um there is something um dr ferdinand that i would like to um bring to our attention if we're finished i don't know if you if we're finished um talking about the office of the president i know we keep saying the president the president but we're really discussing the office of the president and not necessarily the yes, person yes. yeah so let, yes. we just want to right. um clarify that but um um are we are you finished with that um i think i think so i think kimar made his i think kimar made his, his his point very clearly and i think gives us a lot of food for thought um especially considering the the term the termination of her time next year and the general election within another year uh, uh, upcoming, you know. Um, I wish, you know, I've I've known um, Sandra for many, many, many years. As a matter of fact, there was always a time when they thought she and my sister were 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 sisters um, because they look they looked um, you know so similar. And I've always considered her to be a, a person of integrity. I, I found her a very easy person to chat with. I've found her a very likable person. She has held some significantly important offices all over the world. She, I think at one time she was in Belize, I believe it was, um, in, in one instance. I don't recall all of her postings, but she's highly respected as far as I'm, I'm aware, and a wonderful person. I, I don't know anybody who I've ever heard say anything really negative about, about Sandra Mason. Not that I have heard. I, I found her a really wonderful person um, and a very strong one. And, and I, would, I would tend to think that, I mean, you saw her presentation. Um, Marcy, remember when there was all of this talk about um, the gender issue and whatnot, and she made it, she expressed, I think, at a meeting with Paradox or something of the sort, she expressed quite clearly what her position was uh, and where she stood on the mat. You know, if, if I did this when, when my mother was alive, she, she, you, you had to be swinging around on top of your, your body and all that kind of stuff she talked about. Um, but I, I appreciate the fact that um, we are looking at the office more than the person um and so i think it's important for us to really pay attention that's why i float the idea that i believe the people of barbados need to be brought into the equation when it comes to selection of these positions so yes i think we have we have uh, dealt with that quite effectively especially from emar's uh, kimar's standpoint and um within introductions from caswell yeah. as well yes thank you um dr ferdinand well we have a uh, uh uh, Mr. Franklin, um, some uh, we have a, a document here that we want to take a look at, and um, we, we want to talk a bit about um, the disabled in Barbados. 
and um i'm going to send you something mr franklin that you can um you know take a look at um and i know dr ferdinand is going to try to put it up on the screen because barbadians we want to have a discussion um um tonight so mr franklin take a look at your um at your phone and um um let me just say to the viewers so sorry that we, we weren't able to get it set up um for you before the show but we're going to get it um inside i think dr ferdinand has it and well I think i'm going to try i'm important. going to try to put it up here and if it's not big enough marcia i'll try to put it up as a, as a separate page um you can yes. let me know or the viewers can let us know if they're able to see it uh properly to when i put it. it up yeah yes yes and um i i i um miss mclean and i we had a discussion um today and um yeah it's um yeah it's a, a little tough to see but it's the best we can do right now okay okay so you Let might, me, i'm you gonna might try to, i'm gonna try another route i'm gonna try another route. another route okay thank you yeah um but what I think I think what we want to we want what we need to look at is um, you know as it relates to our national ID and those who are disabled. Uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Franklin or Ms. McLean can help me to understand what happened before before the Strident ID. Um, how do we determine that someone is disabled officially? What what's the normal procedure? That, that happens. Say, for example, um, someone wanted to, um, someone someone um, has to get uh, disabilities, whether it is through the, is that through the pensions or um, NIS, etc. NIS. What, yeah, NIS, I'm sorry. Well, what well, is the normal procedure? Um, well, if you were injured <laughs> or are ill, for, for national insurance purposes, if you are injured on the job, Mm -hmm. you get disablement benefit depending on the level of disability if you have yeah. more than more than 30 percent disabled you get a disablement benefit but in order to do so the national insurance will send you to a doctor who specializes in the area where you're claiming to be ill so if you let's say you have a neurological problem they will send you to a doctor that does that. If you have a problem with orthopedics, they will send you to an orthopedic specialist. And that person will then determine the level of disability. And, and if he says, well, it is less than 30%, you won't get disability, disability benefit. However, you might still not be able to work and you could get invalidity benefits. Invalidity benefits, are, are, you get less than disablement. But tell them when you get hurt at work. Mm -hmm. So uh, so let's say you had some illness, and after that illness, you can't work. Let's say you used to, um, you end up getting a heart attack or something, and you you operate heavy machinery and stuff, and you can't do it anymore. They will send you to the doctor, even though the heart attack was not related to work. It is illness now. And that is invalidity benefits if the doctor determines that you are not unable to work because of a medical condition. So national insurance is guided by um, the professionals in the area. Mind you, I, I'm glad you asked about this now because sometimes the professionals that national insurance hire are questionable. And I will tell you why I say this. I will not call the doctor's name. I have already reported him. A gentleman goes to this doctor because the um, they're saying that he is unfit for work and he's not he's not coming to work so after a year in the public service they will send you to the doctor for the doctor and then if you are unfit for work you get your pension early this doctor determined on more than one occasion I've seen it he determined that the man is unfit to work in the public service. He's, 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 he's disabled. Right? He's an invalid. And he gets sent home from the public service. Now he goes to national insurance, now based on that determination. And the national insurance 
send them to their doctor. I don't know if the doctor, they realized that the, the doctor had already made, determined that he was an invalid. But when National Insurance sent him now, the man right, the fellow can work. The same doctor, you know, he deemed you disabled to work in the public service. But then, when you go to National Insurance to get your pension, he doesn't National Insurance the money, he, he can work. The same man. I have complained for him, and I can't get the case to come up because, you know, National Insurance Tribunals were not meeting because there is a medical appeals tribunal at the National Insurance. So even if, so I'm glad that came up now because what I said earlier about the doctor's determinants, let's say that you now don't agree with what the doctor says. Suppose the doctor said that you are fit or that the doctor might say that you are only 40% disabled or you might be 25% disabled, you can go to your own doctor. If he's a specialist, too, in the particular area, and he will assess you. You can use that now as a basis for challenging the, 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 um, the findings of the first doctor. But you appeal yeah. to the National Insurance Medical Appeals Tribunal. And I have seen cases where one doctor says that you were 30%, less than 30% disabled, and the next doctor says you are 70% disabled. Because 70% disabled means you can get a pension for, for life or until the, the disability resolves itself. And it's usually for life if you get 70% disablement. So that is basically how it was done. How, how it's done. Um, yeah, I thank but, you, Mr. But, but, Franklin. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, but, no I, I, I'm, I'm reading this thing that you sent to me. and Let me just say something to Mr. Dr. Ferdinand. Dr. Ferdinand, if you do it the way you had it on WhatsApp and enlarge it, where we can be on the side of it, I think that was a better one. Thank you so very much. Um, let me just apologize. We didn't get that in the system because I have class on a on a um, Monday and a little difficult. But we really want to 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 um, look at look at this. Um, um, yes, Mr. Franklin, you were saying something, and then yeah, I'm just under the identity down. management, you. ah, you can have your disability place on your. Um, digital ID. So that's just probably to facilitate that process. This is to facilitate that process because you can have it included on your ID if you are disabled. Mind you, I get cursed you know, there for, for disabled people, you know. I <laughs> I wanted to care park at Super Center and this guy drives in with a big um, truck and jumps out, you know. And he parked, he parked in the disabled spot. I said, hey, 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 excuse me. That is for physically disabled, not mentally disabled. No, move. <laughs> he, he cursed me. So <laughs> no, no, you know, trust <laughs> Caswell, um, trust Caswell. But, you know, um, Ms. McLean, um, I'm looking at this document, and I don't know if you could take a look at it. Um, now that Caswell has given us um, an understanding of how the process is done um, generally in, in Barbados. Now, this um, this document, I'm just going to read it so that the viewers can, can um, hear what it says. And then, Ms. McLean, I'm going to go directly to you and get your comment on it. Um, it says, um, the Nat Government of Barbados National Disabilities Unit medical registration form this is to certify that i have seen and examined and they put the name in it will be caswell franklin of st Thomas, for the purpose of the trident national id it is my professional opinion that he or she has the following disabling conditions and these are they and the doctor is supposed to tick one of them or or as many as possible Sensory functions, meaning vision, hearing, etc. Voice and speech function. Breathing or blood-related functions. Digestion and metabolism functions. 
urinary or reproductive functions, movement functions, skin-related functions, mental functions. And then it says for the doctor to give a brief description of the disability and for the signature and business stamp, medical registration number and date. Now, this is a document that would be given to um, each doctor to um, that they would have to complete it after examining um, the, the person, the patient. And, um, and that information, it says that it is for the purpose of the Trident National ID card. What are what are what come what what are your thoughts, Miss McLean? Um, you are hearing this, you are reading it. What 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 what's what's going on in, in your mind? I I am a little concerned because when I mean okay, when I looked at the first one, it says sensory functions, vision, not hearing, and and I had gone back to looking at you know disability, um, who qualifies under the national insurance and what, what was required an assessment. Now, if you, and you correctly need an assessment, but do you need to have a, 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 a note, a, a checklist, let me put it that way, that you return? Because as far as I can see, give a brief description, signature, medical registration number, um, at the top of the form, it says Government of Barbados National Disabilities Unit Medical Registration Form. This is to certify that I have examined, seen and examined, as you said, for the purpose of the card. It is in my professional opinion that the person has the following disabling conditions. Now, I, I mean, sensory functions, vision, hearing, to me that says you're either, you know, visually impaired, blind, um, hearing impaired or deaf. Um, voice and speech, speech impaired or unable, you know, dumb or whatever the case to me. But when you start to go into breathing or blood related functions, digestive, digestion and metabolism functions, I'm not sure that, you know, I, I would assume that in examining you, these may be things that the doctor looks at, then he or she writes a letter confirming that Maxine McLean has a disability of XYZ naming a, a particular condition my question when i look at this is to what extent is this perhaps um contravening i guess that's a word how does it go against what is considered doctor patient confidentiality you know um and and what ex that's the first thing in terms of what kind of information should a doctor provide to confirm having done an assessment that patient A or B or C um, is disabled. Um, and I would presume that they probably would have sent some kind of definition um, or acceptable definition but for the medical profession. But a checklist like this seems unusual. I would have to, to run it by a doctor, but it seems as though you're providing some kinds of information that will sit in the hands of God knows who in a unit national disabilities unit um which which therefore then makes some you know some information probably less certainly not confidential and and susceptible to being you know seen and 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 whatever by by, by other parties so i i am wondering in other words how the other thing is how does this de um deviate from what was done before to certify or to, you know during that assessment process so what kind of assessment process what kind of reporting process flowed from that i i i think that these um these these things don't make sense to me i i would have to speak to to a couple of doctors to ask, just to ask them when you see this what does you know what does it say to you but i i it just seems a little sinister to me a little on you but let me let me use a term that is, you tell me I'm diplomatic. It is a little unusual, you know? <laughs> I, right, so I, 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 you know, since you labeled me as that, I will I will drift towards that. So I will not say, <laughs> but I will say unusual. Um, and and yeah. perhaps, um, my, the other question is, is this something new? Um, was there any kind of form used before and you know how how did 
um, the, the, the welfare department or national insurance um, get confirmation of someone's disability. This seems strange. The, um, yeah. the national insurance, they, they get a, a form. There's a, you know, when you go up and you're on sick leave, they give you a, a yellow, yellow form. Yellow form, yeah. The, well, they give you a green one mm. when you are the, uh, claiming for um, invalidity benefits. Okay. And it, it, it was, but that's for national insurance and national insurance only. This what thing does know, is going to the disabilities unit. Well, this is not necessarily a disability unit form, but it's done to okay. facilitate you getting now, this thing oh, included on your um, thing. So let's get into the electoral and boundaries that's commission. Right. Yeah, correct. And um, what I'm seeing here is. I see I'm going to believe my too. There's real blasted voices, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's very diplomatic for me, trust me. Now I'm you know, when men reach a certain age of prostate get enlarged, so you can't piece it good and that's that's a disability. They've got to hear urinary things. And then reproductive functions. That's disability too, suppose you know, you reach the point in your life where um your manhood does no longer answer the call. That's a disability. That's aging. You know? This is real foolishness. Absolute rot. I think they don't, I, I just think they're looking to think that I can understand the sensory functions, the voice and speech and thing, and digestive, digestion. I mean, digestion going to get two thumbs. You know, it is it is just foolishness. No, and and you you can't you reproductive functions you can't reproduce no so you got dis disability. So you know my my mother would have been ninety one years old when she died. Me so for a few years before then she was disabled because she could get more children. So so Caswell, are they really are they really again collecting some kind of information? other than over and above what they need in terms of a summary statement from a doctor or professional who in his or her professional judgment and based on whatever re uh, required tests that they have to do will, will certify a disability. I, I am wondering what they're trying to understand by, no. by, by doing this. And what, what are they going to do? What are they going to do with these answers? So are, are you saying if, if I am disabled and the doctor takes four of the how many they are again um they're about but, three but then how would you so this why would you want all this information precisely because if the doctor says you're disabled and they said and they put on your id card that you're disabled because you That's can choose right. to have your disability put on there you're not going to put all these things here and, and, and certainly you know when we are moving away from identifying people's problems because you know you can't determine if a fellow has HIV and and um and, and talk about it. You can't because you can you can get some serious fines and stuff if you discuss a person's HIV st status. That's the legislation we have in Barbados. Mm -hmm. National insurance used to give you well they the not used to they give you a yellow form, but the doctors used to uh, put a piece of carbon in and write through the carbon. You get the originals to take to the National Insurance Office and the duplicate you would hand in at the office. But it has been de de determined that that one that goes to the office, you still disclose too much information and the people in the office should know what you have. And, and if somebody just spread it. So what the doc, what national insurance has instructed doctors to do now, prepare one. And then for the second one, for the workplace, you can do it on, the, um, on your own stationery and say that you've examined this person and he's unfit for work by reason of whatever illness or stuff. You don't have to determine what the illness is. Now, if we already know this and we do not want that information out there for people because it has been abused and they have put remedies in place to stop you from doing it, no. Here we have it back at you, turn it back at you again. This they, they tell you don't do it. They don't they don't want people to know what you're suffering from. 
if you want people to know sorry for you, you tell them. You don't put it out there and somebody hand it over the cubicle and say, look at what cats well got. You know what I mean? And sometimes people have yeah. um, information that you really don't want everybody to know. My father says, cats well, they want every piece of medical info, even if the person suffers from constipation. They want to know ECD, you know. But what are they doing? I, 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 every time this government does something, I wanted, I wonder about their thought, the thought process. What, what brought them to come to this conclusion? You know, it don't make no sense. But the, yeah. but the concern. You know, I, the, 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 if I may just say something here quickly, just to answer a question that um. Ms. McLean posed one other question. She said that this is something that she would like to um, to speak to a medical doctor about. And um, I spoke with a medical um, doctor today, and actually, we, um, they said to me that this is um, you know they consider this an invasion of the person's privacy that they've never had to do this kind of thing before. And as a as a as a medical practitioner, they have that duty of confidentiality on, um, you know, with their to their patient, and and feel that they are divulging the, the privacy, the information about your patient. For example, um, the whole thing about their reproductive, um, the, the state of, uh, uh, you know, their I can't remember the term. Let me look at it here. Um, you know, what if somebody, what if somebody has, as you're saying, is sterile or, you know, um, they have fibroids or they, you, you know, whatever the situation, there's stigma attached to certain things. And the question is, why would we need that, that on the card? It said for the purpose of the Trident National ID. That's what it says on the form. Read it carefully because somebody's asking um, where, you know, where the, where the information is going. And we know, um, I also spoke to somebody in technology and they said, well, when they gather this information, it goes in the chip, on the card. Why would this yes. be necessary? Um, it says that the breathing or blood related functions of the body, that is, is that, how is that um, disability? Uh, um, skin related, and then you have urinary and reproductive functions seem very very invasive and and makes you wonder you had me scratching my head all of the day as mr franklin is saying is it just nonsense or is there is a there's a method to the nonsense is it is is it just like it's really just crazy i mean this is something i think bump um the barbados association of medical practitioners um this is something that they should really say something about because people who are disabled um, you know, they are, we consider they're the voiceless. And that is one of the reasons that I'm bringing it up on the show. Because this is not something that they, you know, they, they a lot of them don't even realize something is wrong with this. And so we have to speak up for them. I think Dr. Ferdinand was saying something. Dr. Ferdinand, are you still there? Not there. Um, Kimar, yes, yes, I, um, yes, I am actually. <clears throat> yes, okay, I am. But, but you... You raise the point because as you look at the as you look at the I'm just trying to, to um, navigate between the two the screen here and and the, the WhatsApp screen. As you look at the at the form, it's it's asking for some very personal information for the purchase purpose of the Tri ID card. My question is why is this needed for an ID card? Why does a doctor have to, to, to verify these aspects? I thought the only thing you needed for an ID card was a birth certificate. Um, Marcia, remember the other night when we were going through this, I tell you to check on the fifth schedule part two. Yes, of the Barbados Identity Management Act. Yes. It says particulars contained in the digital chip of the identification card and at nine it says type of disability where applicable so if you're disabled you put it it goes on the chip it goes on the chip thanks for confirming it mm. the issue that i think the doctors are concerned with is that they in their practice they've never had to divulge this type of information not in the practice here in barbados um to confirm someone's disability and we are sounding the alarm 
on this show on behalf of the disabled in Barbados. This, uh, we don't know. So somebody needs to, the band, the, the doctors need to be speaking up uh, about this. And why, why is it now that you are asking about people's urinary or reproductive functions? Uh, why is that being asked on, um, uh, to determine disability? As somebody said, they might as well ask you about your bowel function. Why are they doing this? Is there a method to this? Is it just crazy that somebody doesn't know what is going on? They're crazy or there is a method to their crazy? But, but, what what, is why is it, but the question is, why is it connected to the Trident National ID card? Somebody has to explain that. Let, let me let me say this. I the more I, I sit down and analyze this, um, we were talking yesterday about other surveys we've seen information being compiled and so on. My question is: Is the government seeking to use opportunities to collect some kind of whatever kinds of information? Exactly. Um, and and this, because to me, there is no way that you need to complete such a form to certify that Maxine McLean is disabled. I am attending that some disabilities are visible, others are not. But at the end of the day, if you want to question a professional judgment, and as you heard, if somebody is, is up for being medically boarded, um, they go to the doctor, they have, they're having problems, they bring in certificates, demonstrating that they've not been able to work and they're off the job for months on end and whatever else. A decision comes down, okay, we need to have this person uh, this person cannot function. Perhaps they need to be to be medically boarded. What do you do? You then send them to a government doctor. Caswell mentioned that. The doctor does not, as far as I know, send details of blood tests, other kinds of tests, and so on. They send a, 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 a statement summarizing whatever the case may be. But you are asking medical practitioners to put... Um, on, on their information that you will store somewhere or some places, you know, because it, it is issued by the Disabilities Unit. Chances are that they they may receive it back or, or it goes because we have to look back. I have to look back at it and see where where it's supposed to go. Um, but, you know, it, it to me is excessive. It, I mean, I just sent it to a, a, a Barbadian doctor overseas. I'm going to send it to a couple more of, um, of different generations to see how they respond to that. But it, it does not make sense. The other thing is, the, these are some of these are some of the things that people should be told about. Because let's say, for example, you are well, like a, an adult with a mild mental disability. You're functioning and whatever, but you're not necessarily functioning at your actual your numerical age. You're given a form and you're told, well, you need to get this completed. Uh, but um, well, I mean, I think that I think that the, 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 the stopping point will be the doctor because I I will wait to see. I mean, we may have to we may have to get some feedback from a cross section of doctors. But I, I mean, I have I have to go and get my my annual checkup and I'm going to I'm going to show it to my doctor. And ask him if you had to fill this out for me, what what would you do? But I will ask him. But I I just find it it is it's very strange. It is it is seems as people say very intrusive. I saw some comment earlier about somebody said they're blood donor and 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 I'm not a blood donor, an organ donor, and 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 something. Now, if I'm an organ donor and I'm asked to provide some information. I choose to provide that information and I provide it to a very specific place, you know, um, but but um, maybe some kind of registry. But you are talking, I'm, I'm not sure what the population of persons with disability, what kind of number has been identified for Barbados. But you're talking about having information on thousands of citizens sitting somewhere, takes us back to the whole issue of security. Um, and really and truly, at the end of the day, you're talking about people's personal medical information. You're not asking for a conclusion, as I said. I, I, you know, it, it, I, await, I await the response of two categories of persons: those persons who speak on behalf, members 
the, the representative the, um, of, of, of persons with disabilities. There are several bodies and uh, umbrella bodies as well, individual bodies, um, health NGOs and so on, catering to a number of persons, as well as those persons who are in the medical profession. I, I like to add. Yeah. I like to add here that this is a back door form. I think it's, so. It's sneaking through the back door, because if it was a, a, a legal form, it would be one of the forms set out in the schedule to the act. If you look, you will see change of residence form. It has a particular form, and it's in the is in the is in the schedule with the form the information that would be on that form. Everything that you need in legislation is usually legislated. Now, this is a backhand method of getting the information because how dare you send me to the National Disabilities Unit to get a form to go someplace else so I don't have me to take the Electoral and Boundaries Commission. No, it should be an Electoral and Boundaries Commission form that will determine because it is their ID card. So why am I going to get something from the disability unit that ain't got no call in my business unless I want them to be? You know what I mean? This is out of order. But again, this government is always out of order. I tell you, they act first and think later. That is why we always have so many reversals. This ain't going to be reversed too because the kind of nonsense that you're asking for, you know? In the public service, when you get, when you get medically boarded, they, 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 they don't give this uh, all this big long set of anything you know they just tell you the board met on a particular day and they examine the person on which have a date again from this particular ministry and the boy found that he has um whatever and and that yeah. he'll be rec that he will be as unfit for work or they can continue to work or he should be given like duties that's what the medical board does it's not a big fancy nothing you know, but these want this these want down to your very socks. They want to know what color on the way you're wearing. Yeah, yeah this, this is madness, you know. Yeah, it is. And you know, Mr. Franklin, the thing order. is, is I want yeah, I want Barbadians to um to really, really make this something a, a serious matter. And you know, Mr. Franklin, because we're talking here about a set of people in our society that we like the elderly that we have to take care of them. We have to look out for them. We become the voice of the disabled in this country. We join them. In fact, they have a strong voice. And so we need to join them. That is what, what we would be the right thing to do. And that is why as soon as I saw it and understood uh, um, what was going on with it, then I felt that we needed to address it um, on this show. And I did some due diligence in doing some research. I checked with somebody in the in the technical field and they said it would definitely be going on the chip. Some of we, um, I, I went, called another uh, operate, um, opposition and they said, yeah, it's in the in, in, in the Barbados Identity Management Act um, as well. And so, you know, I think that this is important. Kimar, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you all guys discuss the technical aspects of the issue. However, I like to put names and faces onto these things. And if I can remember, we had two persons in the parliament speaking about disability issues. One, Emma Hickson, however, he can't be blamed because he's not a minister. And two, the minister of people in the parliament, which is Humphrey. Right? Mm -hmm. I heard him speaking to these issues of treating the people with disabilities however uh he didn't quite explain this to us that they, they'll be seeking to to invade the privacy of disabled people um uh, i think having a disability should be private information you, you don't walk about with a tag on your shoulder saying i am disabled <laughs> right <clears throat> um if you really wanted to do something to help disabled people put more railings on buildings for disabled people to have access, upgrade the airport, upgrade all of the ports, upgrade all the government buildings and infrastructure to accommodate for disabled people, right? Uh, make the specialist doctors more known, invest in Anne Hill School, mm -hmm. right? Because Anne Hill School is riddled 
with environmental issues and, and the children are becoming sick. Invest in Iron Hill, right? In, invest in Irving Wilson, but they're not doing that, right? <clears throat> I have not heard about any substantial social program that would assist students from Iron Hill and those schools after they leave uh, school to, 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 to be integrated into the world of work. I have not heard about any programs that would streamline them uh, about, you know, safety measure and just to ensure that they have proper housing. Um, you know, the cars with the, 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 you know, they have special cars for the disabled that they have to put with the, um, you know, the different infrastructure in it. But they don't want that or they're not able to do that. What they're doing is to try to invade the privacy of the disabled, use the disabled people to get money, right? Because don't get tight. This is tight to a program. It's either funded by one of the, the Bill Gates programs that Mr. Humphrey is a very big champion of, or it's funded by the IDB or one of these places. I, I can bet, right? So they're using the disabled to try to get money from the international world, not doing anything really to help the disabled community or not, right? And I know a lot about the disabled because I have a family member who, who you know, is on the spectrum autistic so you know i know i know it very deep so invest in the disabled community in a very serious way right we had we had a former senator this country who was blind right that was good we, the, um there was there's a senator uh his name i think it's andre lee boyce i believe um he he i think he was he was Speaking on behalf of the, I like, think he's an independent senator, right? No, that, it, but, no, no, it, he's a government senator. He's a government senator. Really? Oh, he's government senator. Go, oh, government, government, right? So besides his tokenism, because that's what that was tokenism, right? The government has not done anything substantial for the disabled or the autistic uh, community. We, we have that school down there. Uh, it's called the Derek Smith School, right? Excellent, excellent facility to help the young uh, disabled community in Barbados, right? What I find is that most of the disabled children in Barbados, and I, I just stretch in here now, tend to be more males, right? As opposed to more, more femininity. So you have a, a scenario where most of the, the, male, the young males uh, in society tend to end up in schools like Angela, Urban Wilson, and those places they see in Derek Smith School. Right, and the government, I mean, it's not a big community. Right? These people have to complain bitterly to the government for proper facilities on buses. Right, so the government would go to China and to buy buses, but where's the infrastructure for those people on the buses? Right, where's the infrastructure for government for when they want to come into the same EBC and those places? Where is the infrastructure for them? I, I thought we're just paying in a car lot with the disabled wheelchair sign in it. And if somebody parking it, you take a picture and put it on the net and say, well, use the disabled champion. You're fighting for people though that they can't get a disabled car spot. I don't mean that. I mean, <clears throat> seriously, like when you go to the places and I see a lot of it, you have people who are disabled who work the cash registers, right? They work in stores, they get facilitated to, to gain jobs to become independent, right? So it's not all about putting disabled people on welfare. Because call it disabled, that don't mean that it can't work, or that don't mean that it can't function. You might not be able to work fully, uh, according to however the doctor works you up. You might not be able to work fully. But Disabled people are people too. They have lives. They want to work. They want to enjoy themselves like anybody else. And you know, we should have, I just said this, but we should have, uh, as a part of the system in Barbados, proper facilities. I, I will end on this note. I saw a picture online. And I, I guess uh, Maxine would continue because the beach is one of her favorite places to go, right? <laughs> So, there are facilities on beaches, 
that allows the disabled people in, wheel in wheelchairs to have a ramp right out into the sea that they can come and, you know, be out and get a sea bath or whatever. <clears throat> Simple, small, innovative ideas like that would, you know, would help so much for those people. But no, you look past all of these tangible benefits for the disabled community to want to invade their privacy. So, I mean, I send all my love to the disabled community fully and totally. And we go fight for you all, you know, we will step up and fight for you all. Uh, but I, I, I was rest on this one that we need to seriously start paying attention to those people and stop excluding them uh, from our society. Marcia, okay. I listened at a, a program, I think it was Sunday, um, and they had several, several, um, this was brass sacks, I think. There were a number of the panelists, well, the panelists were made up of persons with a, with a cross-section of disability. I remember there was somebody with myasthenia gravis, um, somebody whose child or children, there might have been two, were, um, who suffer from autism and so on. And Kimar made a very critical point what resources and i'm going to link it to educational reform as well what resources are we seriously putting we've talked about transportation etc but there continues still to be um a need to address the 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 needs of the disabled i have a cousin whose son um he is wheelchair bound and so on and there were challenges getting him to school you know, so I think what 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 you're really saying is what are we doing in substantive terms to address the needs of the disabled? And that is critical, um, whether it is in school, after they've completed school and so on. I mean, there are a whole set of things. And in fact, I think that if we seriously work to address them and one of the points that was made by one of the, the parents was that you you were talking about integrating the children with different types of disabilities into the, reg the regular school, but the teachers were not properly trained to deal with those things. I think, for example, this lady spoke of a situation where when the child becomes agitated because um, he or she was not necessarily vocal, they would start spitting. And the child was suspended for that rather than establish a, a kind of training so people understand what what are what what to look for so i agree there's a lot of work to go there i want to go back now quickly to this issue of what's on an id card i had a nephew who sadly left us last year and he had a heart condition and he wore a piece of jewelry which identified that that was his situation now if you're telling me that on an id card um you have on that chip um, information like um, diabetic, you know, person suffers from seizures, has a heart condition, has has kidney disease or whatever, so that when, if he and she had to present themselves to a, a medical facility, right? Um, let's say, uh, heaven forbid, the person had an accident or they had an episode and they looked and pulled up that information by scanning the card, that's one thing. But why are you asking these? To what end? You know, I mean, it it sounds like somebody's carrying out some research and they are using this as an opportunity um, to do this. So, but I, I have, I continue to send the questionnaire to a couple of people, both persons in the, dis, um, in the disabled community and, and persons working in the medical profession, because it really, it really would be useful to hear from a cross section of persons, what 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 this is is about. So maybe soon for yeah. now we will see something that Bar Barp has to, to complain about. Cause they're asking Barp members like myself about all kinds of things after you reach some age or something. Now, I, in all seriousness, if you are looking to collect information, come to the public. Say that we are using this opportunity to do all of these things for these reasons. Now. That should be challenged. That particular form should be challenged. But if you are doing surveys, um, the designer of, of those surveys should be should should be sensitive to 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 what is considered proper practice, and do these things accordingly. 
yeah you know you know um and i know that marsha cattle is supposed to be uh, addressing the parliament tomorrow um yeah. concerning yeah. the regarding the um trident id she said she's going to make a statement i know they listen to the show and I, I either her or colleagues somebody needs to get a message to her that this is something that they need to that she needs to address because I, she's speaking on behalf of the ID that she's that she's speaking regarding the ID. This is a concern here. The disabled community, why are you asking them these very intrusive questions? What is the purpose of it? Where would this be kept? What does this have to do with identification? I understand, I do understand someone is saying that some um, this disability, is, everything is not all physical, but some of it is mental. But we're talking about people's reproductive um, issues here. Can, can you imagine somebody but, have fibroids or... Marcia, or, or to, that, like that? to, to that person, to that person, if you have a mental disability, it will stay so, but you don't put that on a form that goes somewhere. If you understand what I'm making, I'm saying, so a doc, you go to a doctor and the doctor says, look, um, this is to certify that xyz is is suffering um is you know, uh, is bipolar i don't know what the technical language or suffers from schizophrenia or whatever the case may be or suffers from depression what i'm saying they give you a summary di um, diagnosis or the, or they have categories of conditions but those are those are not those are not i mean this is like inputs into trying to decide you know, so if you want to know, you you give the, the doctor guidelines, and they would do it, and then the information goes, and and that in itself also needs to be highly confidential as well. And let know? me tell you something. See, I disagree with that. I can tell you why, because my experience. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, I was a personal assistant, so that had a house fire in Saint Thomas, and this house burnt, and the lady lost her medication. She was she was the patient from the psychiatric hospital. So the, some, one of the neighbors said, but all she medication burned up in the house. If she don't get she medication, she can be back down in the mental. So I took it upon myself to go to the psychiatric hospital and explain to the nurses what happened and see if I can get some medicine to bring for her so that mm -hmm. she wouldn't have a relapse. When I was walking into the clinic, I saw this lady in the corner of my eye who worked in the same building with me, but a different department. <laughs> and when she saw me, she slid down in the chair, like hiding <laughs> from me, right? So I am, um, so I pretended not to see her. I went, I explained myself to the nurse. The nurse gave me a whole set of tablets and a bottle, full of bottle with that, and gave it to me, tell me, oh, can I back when she won't call? No, she will not get this, she gave me back down here. I said, that's why I came, and she gave me the tablets, I, I was walking through and I just took the tablets and I just tossed them with my hand, not, not high, and caught them, you know. And when the lady saw me, she said, for Frankie, because you know what happened? She thought that I was, um, it was your medication. Yeah. And that I mean, she had the same boat. So she was, she then felt better that she could show me. I didn't have the heart to tell her they were not mine. I, so to this day, she believes that I think, you know, so I don't tell her anything, but <laughs> I, you know, sometimes you got to be doing a good thing for a person. She didn't want yeah. me to know initially when I was About walking there. Yeah, oh. but, but when she realized that I was getting medication too. Oh, man, I was a, a, a right. kindred spirit. So they don't want you to know. And that is the information that you want people to know anything about. You know, I, you know, I, I could understand. I could understand um, certain aspects of a person's health. Um, you know, sometimes you may be traveling, something happens, nobody knows what's going on. And, <clears throat> but then again, how do you access the card to get the information unless you're walking with an, with an instrument on an ongoing basis to do that? You no, know, you, they, I, they, they you, got these bracelets that identify yeah, but we're talking. <clears throat> yeah, you know, but what we're what talking about here is, is a Barbados ID where the information mm -hmm. is going to be put on the chip. Now, unless I'm traveling with a device that can read that chip, um, I don't know what's going on with you. Those things that you're talking about and, and, and some other things I, I, I know that they use 
will help identify that person right away. So if if they, for example, not only that, but I, I, the I, I, airport, will, not only that, it will tell you which condition you are suffering from. Some yeah. people wear them mm -hmm. around their necks. Some people wear them on at bangles. On their wrists. So, if you got yeah. a, so you, you more need a bangle that, that everybody will see and doctors know what this, this what that symbol means. You don't need it on your ID card. Yeah, but but precisely, you see, this is this is what's concerning me as I look at it because. When one looks at the global agenda, which people don't seem to be wanting to ad admit and acknowledge, it is a gathering of information. Now, if they're going to do this with your physical condition, mark my words, finance is coming. Finance is coming. Where they will be able to shut your account down. This is not a joke. It's not a conspiracy. This is not this foolishness that you hear people with. It's being compiled around the world. Why doesn't the government, as as I think it was uh, Maxine, I think it was Maxine or, or um, Marcia, why does the government just come out and tell you this, is this a part of the of, of paradox or is this a part of Paho or is this a part of a of a of a, of a, uh, a survey being done by the IDB or blah 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 or whatever? Why come in through the back door? And yeah, this is that, to do with my, seems, my ID card. That, that's how it. That's how it seems to us. But it I would. It, wanna... But it would seem to us that way, Marcy, because again, the government is not coming straight out and delivering to the people information that is necessary for them to know, so that they can make an informed decision. This is the modus operandi for the last how many years? Yeah. You know, um, and, and again, I want to say, um, we, we, I want to thank all of those who reached out to me today, two, three, six, mm. seven thousand to get their, um, to get the, the concerns and the questions that were posed at the, uh, at the press conference, the famous press conference. We, uh, I have sent it out to my representative, um, online because that's the only way I get to speak to him. I've never, I've not we? seen it. I've got, uh, but you, but you, you know, you, you know, you know, uh, Marcia, Marcia, Doctor Miles Monroe said that if you make an appointment with them and they don't see you, take them to court. <laughs> no, yeah. but that that's you the know, states with their marriage and stuff. But what I'm trying to think is that Marcia, but just have done something. I don't think that man can read. You know. <laughs> well, whatever <laughs> it is, I I know I sent I sent it off. His secretary, somebody will be able to see it. And I know that quite a number of persons have contacted me and said, ask, ask for the document. You can still do that um, because they don't, I think Parliament, uh, what time they start? Nine o'clock or 10 o'clock? They start um, tomorrow. I think 10. 10 o'clock. So um, please reach out to get that document. But I think what we can do, because this, this form is a public document, so we can send it around. Um, I'm gonna put it um, I'll put it up on my page and and share it guys share it and and ask people to look at the form and to determine if the, the, if these things are disabilities let people see it let's expose it let's let's um, let's expose it and let's play our part as Kimar say in the fight for those that are disabled uh, among us it's a small community. And there's a lot of, you know, stigma attached to things. Can you imagine if this gets out online, if, if this gets out there and embarrasses people? Well, I, and, and then why are you asking those those questions about my, my reproductive um, um, issues and, and all of these di different things? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so we want to say to um, Minister Cattle, Minister Cattle, this is some, this, if you're going to address us tomorrow, this is something that we would love for you to speak on. We would love to hear you speak on this issue. We did not have it in our original document because it only came to our knowledge today. And so we are adding this. And we would love a response on this, um, this please, um, tomorrow. Now, um, our, our Wednesday, our when, on Wednesday, Kimar, there is um, the budget, is there somebody sent me something um, I think on I Wednesday. Think I, I think on Wednesday, the the governor's central bank. I think is going to be is going to be making a presentation. I believe it is. Yes. 
Um, Kimar, in a, in a couple of minutes we have, do you have any pre-comments about that? We know the, 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 the comments have not been made yet, but do you have anything you want to say in, in lieu of that um, that statement? I guess they will have, they'll be, yeah. Do you have any, um, that address? Any comments? Well, um, <laughs> It, the report that's coming, it, it, just a quarterly report that will report on the last three months of the economic activity in the country. Um, I guess the, the governor will say that the economy continues to grow. <laughs> Barbados is enjoying buoyant economic growth and we recorded yet another uh, quarter of economic growth. Um, again, but he, do, he, he, he never says if it's real growth or nominal growth. He never ever says that. But <clears throat> I would tell the Barbadians that in the, this, this, this economy is not growing, it's recovering because we have not gone back to the point that we were at before COVID. So it's not growth, it's recovery, right? Um, it, it, it is not even that, Kimar, because you do not borrow growth and all the money that we got has been borrowed. Correct, correct. Uh, tourism numbers, I suspect that they're going to come with the Califox uh, as it relates to it. You heard Maxine on the show speaking about the tourism numbers. You see the paltry performance of the tourism ministry in terms of uh, helping to rekindle um, the economy. <clears throat> um, the, he's also going to speak about the international business sector and how the government still has to meet its obligations uh with the united states in terms of the Biden tax plan and um, that still has not been sorted out as yet uh, as far as i know because uh he should not be the one making that not smoke per se but he, that should be coming from the minister of finance and the prime minister um but he will say something about that in terms of we still need to meet that obligation um <clears throat> he, he will speak about price inflation and the and the prices in, in Barbados and how um, we have some some minor decreases in overall inflation. Um, but overall, the catch, the catch that they're going to cover is that the economy has had another quarter uh, of economic growth. But don't be caught with that because the World Bank, the IMF, the IDB, all of these international banks have downgraded the economic forecast for Barbados. The IMF has downgraded the economic forecast for Barbados. And they all downgraded the economic forecast for the, the global economy. So the whole globe is slowing down in terms of economic activity. So Barbados, a country that has recognized no new industries, right, has seen no increases in current industries, continuing to borrow high levels of debt, Right. Um, what we have to do is to prepare for the budget that is going to come in March. Because as we speak, they are preparing for the estimates and budgetary proposals coming in March. Right. So, so they will not make any grand pronouncements per se, but they're going to gradually, or he's going to gradually induce the conversation about making more cuts to state-owned enterprises. Right. So you're going to hear him say something about reforms. Oh, you know, uh, we we met the targets, the IMF targets as it relates to the reforms and the new IMF program. We, we, we did the pension reform and we are continuing the SRE reform. So therefore, we're going to meet our primary surplus targets and we're going to meet our fiscal uh, deficit targets. That's just economic language to convolute and confuse people who don't know any better. Right. <clears throat> that SOE reform simply means that again job cut. Because remember they just want to cut the state or the prices off central government just to win them off right. and allow them to fund themselves like what they're doing with the water authority, sanitation, but they're gonna trade with the NAS. Mm -hmm. Right? To have them self funded. So the budget that is coming, right? The budget that's coming may be painful because the government will seek to implement some levies, uh, especially on places like the hospital, 
say some levies or the authority maybe in the power center to try to help meet these so-called revenue targets uh they may not put on a tax per se upfront tax but they might put on some point to sell levies and, and start charging people directly uh so so the governor will he will come out and say out front but you will say in this convoluted economic uh, language, but we'll be here to interpret, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be on. We'll be on on Wednesday night, God willing, and um, mm -hmm. Mr. Franklin and everybody else. We are going to have a special guest, uh, Mr. Glyn Murray. Uh, will be on with us um, on Wednesday evening, and um, he is going to place the emergence of the evolution of this show in the sociological, historical, and political context. Um, it's going to be quite, I'm excited about that. You know, I'm, I love learning yeah. about all these things. Yeah. And, um, and he is he's going to look at um, 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 things like um, Tom Adams and Delight Bradshaw, Tom Adams and Lionel Craig, and the, the Motley and the Rose situation. He's just going to use the, um you know draw from history and to kind of bring things into into this uh current um yeah yeah give yeah to give perspective yes that's the word i'm looking for and i'm looking i'm really looking forward um to that on um wednesday i believe that um that we, it's going to be great and we are we we, we will have, by then we would have heard what um the minister minister cattle has to say and we will have some discussion on that and um and we'll have what the the central the address from the central bank we'll have that as well so we are looking forward to a, to a great show um please remember to continue to ask for the um the, the questions that were posed at the press conference to the government concerning the id you can still have access to that and to still send it to your mps and we're going to put out this um, issue here with the dis dis from disability units um, mm -hmm. with these very um, invasive questions, um, uh, uh, you know, against the, the um, those of the, dis dis the disabled community. And um, we are, and you can you can you can send that around so people can see what is, what is happening and to really stand our ground on behalf of those who are disabled in the country as we normally do it's 10 on one but we're, i'm going to ask um this wonderful panel and my co-host um to give um their um you know final words for this program <laughs> um anything that they want to leave with the with the audience um before we go um please do so i'll start with Kimar yeah um i forgot to mention it but maybe we can discuss it another time but i want people to be very vigilant about the amount of companies that are applying for licenses to supply electricity to barbadians i saw on sunday the nation group this is the nation newspaper applying for a license to supply electricity to barbadians okay. I, I took a picture of it because i can't believe it myself Right, but <laughs> there's so many companies. I, I mean, every other day, you know, you see a new company apply to supply. Where, where, where all of this? Where all of these new people coming from? Right, I, I we need to know who are behind these companies. If you got any politicians behind these companies, um, that thing because as far as I know, light and power is the source supply electricity and barbers. Then the government passes the legislation and change it. And they are now allowing all of these new private players in the market to supply electricity to us. So some explanations need to be had surrounding the influx of all of these new the nation the, the nation supplying electricity. <laughs> right. We we need some explanations there. Yeah, but, but, but there's so much, let me tell you, so much to discuss on this show. Um Dr. Ferdinand, um, what are your what are your thoughts, sir? What do you want to say to um, this wonderful people before you go? Well, to be honest with you, Marcia, I just like to tell them I would like to see a revolution in politics in Barbados. We need to have something comprehensively new, and I floated the ideas, and it's up to us as the people to determine whether we're going to take those ideas and run with it or not. Yes. 
thank you, Dr. Ferdinand. Um, great ideas. Um, Ms. McLean? Um, <laughs> there were some things I want to say, but I, I, Kimar just said something which triggered um, something else in my mind. When you mentioned the applications to supply electricity, my question was whether it's to supply to the main supplier that is the light and power, or is it saying something about Emira? Was it Emira? I try to remember the exact pronunciation of the company is looking to, 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 to make some moves. What I would say though, to date, those persons um, who have been providing um, so generating electricity, you know, using solar, it is proven lucrative for certain suppliers. Now, um, as I, I, I would have signaled to you at some point in time, I'm going to come back and talk about recent developments in relation to the, the sugar industry and, and the connection between that renewable energy and the, comp the entity that was created, um, um, the, the energy cooperative, because certain things, if done right, could be very transformative. Caswell, you and I have to have an off, off, off the program discussion because I'll tell you, I am looking back 40 years when we were out there, when we saw the creation of City of Bridgetown, Barbers Light and Power Credit Unit, Barbers Workers Unit, the expansion of your original credit union, if I could call it that, the National um, Barbers Work, um, but the, the Public, uh, Public, Public Workers, Workers yeah, Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union. And there's potential for some transformative action because when you see all those things and plan um, Kimar, you have to ask yourself why. And it is time, and this is my, my last word, it is time that we, the consumers, also become owners of significant interest in this country. And that is, that is something you will hear me on and on again. But it has to be done right. Otherwise, people may try to thwart very good efforts. Yes. More, more, thank you. I will say more in the future. Thank you, Ms. McLean. And people also want to the show about the marijuana. Um, well, you need to tell me when so that marijuana. I would, you know, I, I, I'll yes, prepare. So we, we, have that, to, you know. we have to prepare that. Um, mm -hmm. General, um, what do you have to say to us tonight to close out? Thank well, you so I much. I have a lot of things to say, but there's one. I had a lot of things to say, but there's one thing I particularly wanted. But when I came on for it, he started me going and we went from one thing to the next. And I didn't get to, to scare the hell out of the people about something that um, I wanted to tell them about. And I can do it now. You know, if you have gone for your Trident ID card and you change your address, you have to go back to the Electoral and Boundaries Commission and tell them, I changed my address. And you must do so within 30 days or you have to pay a fine of five hundred dollars madness what did we tell you yeah. madness well, that well is you that you section. Just, just repeat that for me again before you start that up at 1007 1007. he started me up and i didn't get to this <laughs> i wanted to scare the hell out of them sleep on it i wanted to scare the hell out of them <laughs> By letting them know about this, because this is part of the legislation, you know. Section mm. 9 5 of the Act it says a person who has been issued with an identification card or a national identification identity credential shall notify the chief registrant officer of any change of his address or place of residence within 30 days of the change of address by submitting the notice of change of residence form set out in the form schedule and now this mm -hmm. six now says a person who contravenes subsections one and five i just read five to you is liable to pay to the commission at administrative penalty of five hundred dollars so you have your id don't move don't move let me tell you, they're, they're going to they're going to push people. This is, they're going to have a revolution in this country. They they they're pushing people. But um, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Franklin, we, we got to go. But this is <laughs> look at when you bring this thing. Oh my lord! Well, Freddy, he he, he got me talking about other things. <laughs> Marcia, Marcia, the beginning of the show was so sweet <laughs> because we were talking about brown sugar, brown 
brung skin girls and frozen joys and he couldn't resist it. Oh Lord, so. <laughs> you see, and you see how they take the show up. Anyway, we will continue this, Mr. Franklin, and I and I just five hundred dollars. And all you gotta do is one, don't it, move. You know, wow. I remember when the guy came to me with the gun, he said, Don't move. He stuck me up. So this is like that. They're gonna rob you. <laughs> he said, Don't move. Don't move. If you move, it's five hundred dollars if you don't tell them. <laughs> wow. it is. But yeah. we will continue this on Wednesday, Kimar and Dr. Ferdinand, um uh, Ms. McLean, thank you all so much for being on tonight. We'll definitely continue this topic to um the ID card is the gift that keeps giving. All right, good night, guys. God bless you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. God bless everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Easy D, Esther Blue, Richard Mayers, everybody. Good night. Good night. Pedro Gemma, thank you all for joining. There's no BOI. There's no show without Galviz, without you all. God bless you. Love you all. Bye bye.